Good to you and welcome to the MCG of the Bush. Sandy Creek Recreation Reserve on minor semi-final day. It is a sun-bathed venue and a fantastic looking venue for a very exciting game of football. It's Beechworth taking on the Chilton Swans this afternoon. And for the winner, they will book themselves a ticket into the preliminary final to take on Yak and Dando. All for the losers, it's Mad Monday tomorrow. My name's Gus McLeod. Great to have your company for regional ag and construction. And let's welcome in the call team for your Sunday afternoon. We start with Robbie McKinlay. Hello, Big Mac. Good afternoon, Gussie. And uh, good, well, happy Father's Day to all the fathers who might be Absolutely. tuning in today. I've watching up some might have been listening. But, yeah, and what another magnificent day it is out here at Sandy Creek. We had a beautiful day weather-wise yesterday and it's replicated it today Gus. It certainly has. We welcome in the number one stats man on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Hello Sprinkles Freak. G'day Gussie, g'day. Pleasure to be here mate. It's going to be a really exciting game today I feel and just quietly as Robbie said he's happy Father's Day. I'm claiming today is Father's yes. Day for me as well. I'm about a month away but just think I'll claim in. If there was a terms and conditions I might just sneak in there so I'm claiming it. No presents? No. No, oh, then man, you're not a Father's Day uh, recipient just yet, I don't think, Freaky. No, well, well, last night Molly and I were on the couch having dinner. He certainly enjoys Father's Day. He's got two little girls, and well, not so little anymore. And one of them was playing netball this afternoon or this morning. We speak of Scott <laughs> William Fraser, or as we like to call him, Scooter. Hello, Scoot. Great to be here, boys, on another absolutely brilliant TDF, Dunn's Twin City Cranes TDFL uh, finals day. What an absolute treat. And, uh, yes, Caitlin's team, the under-15s for Yakandanda, won through to the primary final next week. And uh, so did the under-14s footy for Yak and the under-17s. So next Saturday we will have all five footy teams as well as the under 12s for Yak and Dander playing out here so it'll be a sea of blue and white versus uh, all the winners from today. It certainly will be a cracking afternoon for football and netball uh, and today is absolutely picture perfect as well. You couldn't ask for better conditions to play finals football of course, Beechworth. They finished the season in third position. They suffered a heavy loss last week to Yak and Nanda. So they'll be coming out here to this afternoon with a point to prove. Whilst the Chilton Swans, they were emphatic last week. Jensen really made light work of an inexperienced Barnawatha side. You really got two opposite forms of run coming in. You've got Beechworth that have been strong all season but lowered their colours last week up against the Chilton Swans who are coming in red hot. Yeah, absolutely, and it's going to be a really interesting clash as well. Obviously, throughout the year, Beechworth were able to beat Chilton the two times that they did play them, so the Swans are going to have to do something that they haven't been able to do this year, but as you say, Gussie, polar opposites their weeks. Obviously, Beechworth had a few injuries coming from last week and other things as well, and obviously the, the Swans just look like they're prime at the, the right at the right time of the year, but Robbie, I think there's a couple of laid outs for the Swans in today's game. Yeah, they have. We um, Bodie Hibberson is out, and also Nick Stevens, a running back flanker, which I, he was terrific last week, So both and Bodie Hibberson's second half was good. So yeah, And coming in will be Ethan Ritchie, bit of experience in class there, and uh, Matt Swindles. So, yeah, a bit Slightly weakened, I would say, from going on last week's side. And I think the magnitude of these losses, talent's one thing, but finals experience is the other. We know that Bodie Hibberson, his name's synonymous with the football club, but last week I thought the role that Nick Stevens played is that real general in defence. He added so much to their back six, and we know that Beechworth have got a really promising forward line today, albeit without uh, Big Armstrong in the forward line. They've still got the likes of Jai Middleton and Alessandro Belchi and these sort of guys that can go forward and hit the big sticks, losing a guy like Nick Stevens, uh, Scooter for Chilton, just provides a little bit of an opportunity for the Beechworth boys. Oh, look, I think the main thing is they've got to get it down there to start with. Um, Stevens is only one of them, um, like you said, with Garside and a few of the others. I, I just, I, I think the class of Chilton, with, with Beechworth having Tom Cartledge out and Lockie Armstrong, now looking at Lockie Armstrong out the back, He's, he's got a big recovery ahead of him. He could hardly walk, and it happened last Saturday. Um, yeah, and almost had almost had surgery last Saturday night on uh, on that quad muscle because they thought it might have been compartment syndrome. So it's pretty serious for him. He's a big out for for the Bush Rangers. Um, in to the side today. There's a couple of their under 17s boys that have played um, played some good footy for them during the year. Uh, Clancy Ellett. And, uh, and Kane Scott. Um, so those young blokes get a, get a chance to play some, some finals 
atmosphere games out here that just yeah, they probably wouldn't have uh, experienced before. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think the the midfield of Chilton will, uh, will probably be a little bit more dominant than the Beechworth boys today. Robbie, you were really impressed last week with Chilton. What was it about their game that caught your eye? Oh, they looked very consistent. I thought they defended well, which is so important. And in, on a conditions like this today, is your, your defence is just going to be right on their game. Um, they, they really made it hard for Barna Waffa to score. They, they played it like a, a premiership side. They, there was experience there. They know when to go, and they know when to be slow. And they, I thought they did it really well. So, uh, I, but just looking at Beechworth today, Gus, I, I'm always, I like watching sides warm up and just to look in their eye, and there's something about them today. I mean, they're, they're playing to get the, the world against them a bit today. I, I reckon you'll see a very physical start to this game. I think Bodie Hibbertson's going to be a big out yes. with Chilton as well. As you said, Robbie, last week, I thought he was really strong. One thing he did quite well for Chilton in last week's game against Barnawatha is around stoppages is he kept his width quite well and really he used his pace and he did that around the ground as well so obviously losing that from the middle of their ground middle of their game today is going to be he's going to have to try and find that from somewhere else so it's going to be a big loss for them I think but obviously as you say they were so consistent last week Chilton obviously we predominantly cover the ovens in Murray they reminded me a lot of Aubrey in a few yep. ways with the, how consistent they were that's really hard to pick who their outstanding player of the day was but they were just really consistent consistent across the four quarters with the 21 blokes that were out there for them last week so it's going to be a big big task for Beechworth but as you say Robbie looking at Beechworth out there today they look like they're up for the fight. Pre-game thanks to Regional Ag and Construction here on 2AY's coverage of the Duns Twin City Cranes TDFL finals of course you won't miss a thing with us here this afternoon. Uh, I can tell you Chilton have won the toss. The co-captains Ben Mason and Jaden Vandermeer and they've elected a kick to the pony club end of the Sandy Creek Recreation Reserve, which is to the right of your screen, and Beechworth will stay at there. Uh, the acid needs to be poured on the likes of Jai Middleton from Beechworth. I think if they can, uh, if they can, I guess prove their worth and 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 play to their potential they might be a chance but I think Chilton might just be too good and I'm going to pick them by 10 by 10 goals <laughs> yeah. afternoon for Auburn on your MG oh, I think it might be a lot closer I'm, I'm predicting a very even first half and then I think you'll find that yeah, Chilton might get away by about 3 or 4 goals uh, what about you Brad Freak on the Mac Jack Shed stat shed and tell us who we're keeping tabs on this afternoon as well yeah firstly we're keeping tabs on from the Beechworth side of things we've got Alessandro Belchi Connor Stone Tristan Stead and Campbell Fendick who obviously won congratulations to, to Campbell who won the Barton medal at the start of the week uh, and if we look at the Chilton side of things got Ben Mason Brad Hibbertson Kyle Cooper and Ashton Brooks I really liked his game last week I th I th like Robbie I think the game will be a lot closer than what many think obviously a Beechworth being able to get on the top of them to start in the two times they played throughout the year so they do have I guess the wood over them a little bit but with the players that they are missing I do feel like Chilton will probably have too much over the four quarters really got to try and nullify Scotty Myers impact in the middle of the ground as Scooter said it's probably going to be a big job for uh, Jai Middleton in the middle of the ground if he, if he can nullify the impact of Myers it's going to go a long way for them winning the game I certainly think you're on the right wavelength there, Weeky. Oh, freaky. I'm going to tip an upset. I'm going to tip the Beechworth Bush Rangers to bounce back. I don't think they've lost two games in a row for over two seasons. Wow. The last time they did it was in the finals here last year. I'm tipping the Beechworth boys to bounce back in what's going to be a cracking Duns Twin City Cranes TDFL minor semi final. Your call team this afternoon is Scott. Scooter Fraser, thanks to Charcoal Kings, myself, Gus McLeod, and Roy McKinlay for Aubrey Wodonga, MG. Brad Freak is on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Wanger out of Indio Computers as well as Mimo putting together live footage this afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to Sandy Creek for Elders Rural. Meyer and Middleton straight away out of the middle of the ground. Kicked by Stead into half forward for Beechworth. But Finn Lappin takes a good mark. Last line of the fence. Chipping across the ground now. Chilton will bring it to the centre wing. Nice pass there from Jack Gray. Mark missed. Oh, Brooks went in hard at the footy. Gee, it's physical early. A good approach there from the Martin medalist. And it's Campbell Fendick has been tackled on centre wing. So, uh, 
an aggressive start. Early entry for Beechworth. Meyer got the tap, running it onto it is Hibberson. Drove it into half forward. Beaten outside the off stump almost there. Brenton Ryan was good. Handball was smothered. Now they'll have to quickly defend here. Old Red Sox himself, Kane Scott, got himself into a little bit of trouble. Hard through the ball there was Mitchie McLean. And it's going to be balled up. It's got to be balled up. It is balled up. Half forward <laughs> right in front of the Chilton interchange. Gus McLeod. Charcoal King, Scooter. We'll get you to keep an eye on it. Looks like um, McGee is going to change jumper numbers. He's going to wear 25 today. I'll get you to confirm that one as the ball walks out to centre wing. It's Belchie for the Bush Rangers. Goes by hand. He finds the Barton medalist Fendick who kicks long down the line. Chilton have numbers. One of whom is lapping. He wants to find an option by hand. He's got one now in Brooks. Down the broadcast side wing. Hibberson waits underneath it. Scott comes through with a big fist for the Bush Rangers. Chilton have a lot more composure with the footy at present as they go inside oh. 50. Big fly on Doolan's head and he's going to be the recipient of the free kick. Umpire calls play on. Snap on goal from Ben Jones. He's just narrow and I reckon for Charcoal King, Scooter Fraser, you'd almost like Mark Doolan to go back and have that set shot at this stage of the game. Exactly, mate. That's my, my thoughts exactly. But uh, Mitch Jones... Uh Played on, mate. I can confirm in the record, Kyle McGee is number 25. Um, but I'm, I'm led to believe the team sheet might have had 18, which you guys might have. So he is wearing number 25 anyway. 25, Kyle McGee on the team yep. sheet right here. Right here. Thumping kick from Hamish Maslin brought the ball back into play. Van Claveren was clever for Chilton, and he might have been held. He was. So Dylan Van Claveren brings the ball back to midfield, looks for Brooks. Brooks over the footy, couldn't gather it. Beechworth will control it. Now it comes out. Works its way out the back. Now here's a chance for Scotty. Santa Wang is a really good grab taken out there by Clancy Ellett. He looks in board, Robbie. And he's got Alessandro Belchi. Of course, had a bit of a stint in the ovens of Murray before joining... Beechworth, he kicks inside forward 50. Good fist. Chilton have numbers all around this football. Trying to get amongst the action here is Cade Surrey. Spills towards the top of the goal square. Cartlidge is there, but there's a whistle. And it looks like it's going to go the way of Chilton after all of this. Mm. Yeah, high elbow, I think, there, Gussie. Yeah, correct, Freaky. The, uh, Brenton Surrey just raised the elbow as he um, went to get tackled there as, as he had the ball. So I think the free kick's going to go the way of Chilton. They're going to switch the ball out. No, the umpire's going to say, bring it back here, boys. So the uh, the men in yellow just are putting their stamp on this game early days, Big Mac, for Auburn Onger MG. Yeah, they are. Was it that, got, yeah, that would, that's a cut eye. And I think that might have been part of the free kick's good. Yeah, Caleb Bertram uh, was on the end of that elbow there, and he's just come off with a blood rule. Uh, fair gash above his right eye. Kicks in towards centre wing. Geordie Eaton held front ground. Now it works straight out to Jai Big Milton. Finn Lappin's there. Geez, heavy clash of bodies out there at halfback. They're going in hard. Eaton's involved again. Boundary line's close. There's a lot of players swarming over the ball, and we will have it balled up. Brad Freak, what are you seeing? On the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet, three early touches for the Barton medalist, Campbell Fendek, and three inside 50s already for Chilton to start this game. We've played a tick over four minutes, thanks to Simo and the boys at Jap Odong's tyres. Meyer won the tap down. Chilton have numbers. Good tackle applied there by Eaton as they go inside 50 now. The Bush Rangers to the top of the goal square. I reckon this might have got the legs. I couldn't tell you who kicked it from the pack, boys, but it's gone through the big sticks. And I reckon it might be the big ruckman, Liam Stevens, who's going to claim that one. I reckon it is. Yep. I tell you what, it's certainly a contender for the Union Hotel goal of the day. Something from nothing. He kicked it out of the pack, Scooter, and it sailed through the big sticks. And uh, just couldn't get a hand on it in the no. goal square, the uh, the Chilton boys. So uh, well, well shepherded, I suppose. But uh, it looks like Stevens, and it looks like he's jogging off, or he's going to the wing. He covered some ground to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Liam Definitely Stevens. was Stevens. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful finish. Big kick for a big boy, Big Mac. Well, we're back in the middle. That's just the start. Beach work. One of there's something about him here today. Good work there by Fendick. Got it on to Stead. Into half forward, base of the pack, strong play off the left foot by Geordie Eden. Long shot on goal. 
and a minor score and they have made the better start there's no doubt about that 117 they lead Chilton one behind and that is on the commercial club scoreboard Brad Freak on the Mac Jack shed stat sheet he's Campbell Fendex up to four disposals already for Beechworth they've had the last four inside 50s in this game as well they've had all the momentum in the early parts of this game so it's Ash Van Claveren with the kick in duties for the Swans coming down the broadcast side wing Good intercept mark taken there by Stevens once again. It'd be a chance from there, Gus. Oh, <laughs> after one he kicked before in a fairly similar spot, you'd back him in. Stevens just goes, nah, I'm going to do a Robbie McKinlay special. He's got the moz put on him. And I reckon he's lucky to get a boundary throw in there, Big Mac. He's had one absolutely sensational kick and another Barry Crocker. <laughs> he should have gone back and had yeah. a shot because if you look over at the Duns Twin City yep. Cranes flag over there, he would have uh, he would have had the breeze right behind him, would have carried the distance easily. Here's my man with the mullet, the little boundary umpire, flicks it back in. Meyer did well. Intercepted though, almost by Beechworth. Over the footy there was Ash Van Claveren. Now here comes Brooks. Breaks clear. But nicely in the key defensive spot there was Jai Middleton. Kick to the advantage of Jordan Eaton, who's running hard at it. He beats Van Claveren. That was Dylan. Eaton gathers, gets around the left foot. Low piercing kick is a beauty. And he finds Surrey. 45 out directly in front. Now, Scoot, he's normally known for his work in the defence, but he's been swung forward in weeks gone by. Yeah, we know he can punch the ball this far. But, uh, <laughs> uh, look, you know, straight away he just put the hand out, said, boys, settle down, I'm having a shot. Um, his experience is exactly what Beechworth need right now, and if he can, uh, if he can put this through... And give him a little bit more pep in their step. He's going to kick it right on the 50-metre arc. Bang! Hits it off the boot. Won't quite go the journey. Gold Square scramble on now. Players over the footy. Beechworth def Chilton defend OK. They're going to come out of this all right via Connor Garside. Kicks it, but again, Middleton sitting into that kick behind the play. But downfield. Via the corridor to centre half forward. Doolan's the target. Melsom had his cover. Running towards goal. Here's a chance here for Mitch McLean. And it's just missed to the near side. Jakey that, Cooper. Oh, pardon, it was Jakey Cooper. Well spotted Big Mac. Gee, he should just have had a little there. bit more pop, a little bit more class you'd expect from Cooper there running inside forward 50. And Chilton looked to be rushing their opportunities going inside 50. They've had a couple of good opportunities, obviously with that free kick with Doolan they played on, made it a harder chance for himself. Probably could have had a few easier opportunities to start this game. See, Maslam's kicking in already. He's been a highlight scooter. He gives it a good ride, doesn't he? Yeah, look, and they probably watched Josh Garland kick those couple, couple of barrels, barrels. yesterday <laughs> into the centre of the ground. Yeah, that was a real but, highlight well, look, here. It, look, it's, it's something, if you can get out of that zone as far as you can straight away, and as well, as far as you can, that's he, the best thing. Here's Hemming, gets it inside forward 50. Uh, Beechworth might get out of this. Chance here now coming across the hippers, and here's Brooks. Over the footy, and it'll be... Our man Luke Francis was dining last night at the Commercial Club. Very happy with their oh. work. Cooper got taken high. He got clotheslined, in fact. And Kyle Cooper, he'll go back and have a shot. Call it 20 metres out on a slight angle, boys. You'd certainly back him from here. Yeah, he just put himself in the right position, didn't he, Kyle Cooper? Coming up for his second disposal of the day on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Three early disposals for Ashton Brooks off the half-back line. He played really well for the, the Swans last week as well. So just confirming, we do have the scoreboard correct. Here on TDFL's coverage, it's 117 to two behinds. And this <laughs> would give the Swans the lead. Big aspirations and a big footy career await this young man. Our tyre power player of the day last week and a chance to kick the Swans first. Cooper, he likes it off the boot and it's straight through the big sticks. It's a Union Hotel goal of the day from Chilton and it's going the way of Kyle Cooper. Three early, uh, three early disposals for Alessandro Belchi as well in the Matt Jack Shed stat shed. I thought he was a little bit quiet last week, Scoot, for the Bush Rangers. They really need him to put his fingerprints on today's game. Yeah, look, I, I think he's uh, he's probably not where he was this time last year in terms of fitness, and uh, I, I don't think that, that rotation through the midfield. So he needs to pinch hit now for a couple of minutes and then probably rest forward so he can... 
because he's, he's he's most beneficial to the Bush Rangers on the ball with that left foot kick and getting getting those clearances. So Peter Jeffries come onto the ground. Jai Middleton has a rest. He's made a good start today, Middleton. He's got a big task here though. Jeffries up against Scotty Meyer, who tapped it towards Hibberson. Ball's going to come back. That's a free kick. It's going to go the way of looks like Brenton Surrey. He'll handle it off now to Stead. Stead will pump this long. Does just that. Chance here for the other Surrey. Flew high. Chance here. Mopping up. Running onto it now. Liam Stevens shot on gold. Misses. Big opportunity there. Minor score. One gold, two apiece here at Sandy Creek. Early call, mate. I reckon uh, Cade Surrey is going to take the great outdoors mark of the day today. He's, uh, he's flown a couple of times but hasn't got his hand on it. But I'm pretty sure he'll... It is Deegan Dolney, of course, he's the former Myrtleford Alpine Saint in his first year at the club while returning to Beechworth and a very poor kick in from full back from uh, Van Claveren there, Freaky. Yeah, it certainly was, just missed his target, just good pressure there though by uh, Deegan Dolney to hold, his, hold the width and something that Chilton did really well last week to be able to cover his man and intercept that mark. Looks like the breeze is in his back from our broadcast position, he strikes that ball nicely but the goal umpire is doing a fair bit of work. I think he's done too Down much work. Full. Out of bounds on the full. That won't trouble the scorers here. And scores are level at 1-2-8 apiece on the Commercial Club Aubrey scoreboard. We fly just under 12 minutes for Jaffo Donks. If we go around the grounds for Aubrey Wodonga MG in the Ovens and Murray Elimination Final, Wodonga out to an early lead over the Wangaratta Rovers, 4-2-26 to 1-2-8. Uh, 20 minutes gone in the first quarter of that game. Van Claveren's kick in was a good one. He's gone to half back. And he's got a name like a newsreader, hasn't he? Deegan Donnelly, what do you reckon? Remind you yeah. of anyone? No. In line. Deegan Dolney. Deegan Dolling. Deegan Dolling. Thank you very much. Good. All over it. So it's very scrambly out there at half four at the moment, and I think that's. That won't be too disconcerting for Beechworth because that's the way they're going to like to play it. I reckon, Scoot. Keep it in close. Keep it in tight. Get a bit of physicality into the game. Yeah, without a doubt. I think that's their, their way. They need to get the clearances, though. That's the thing. is They can do force as many stoppages as they like, and as they're getting this clearance right now, doing exactly what we thought. It's Dolney looking in board. It's a good kick. The Barton medalist, Fendick, wants to play on and get the bushes inside 50. His kick was partially smothered, and it falls out wide. Eaton shimmies and shakes, lowers the eyes, trying to find Stead. Now the Swans have numbers. Surrey's around this contest. It just pinballs around, barging through. Brooks dives on top of the contest. He wore him like a backpack, Geordie Eaton. Ooh. And the umpire's pinned him for holding the ball. Hard at the footy as ever. Quick kick, left foot into the forward line. Running over the back, Cade Surrey picks it up. He's a chance from here. Step on goal, kicks it. Outstanding finish from Cade Surrey. He's banged it through. The umpire is at the all clear. It's a Union Hotel goal of the day contender. Cade Surrey is something about Beechworth today, boys. They've brought the heat to this game and they take the lead. 2 2 14, 1 2 8, and that is on the Commercial Club scoreboard. Eight inside 50s in this first quarter as well on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. Beautiful goal there by Cade Surrey. I don't even think he thought he'd kick it. There was no celebration when he, when he first struck the ball and it went through and yeah, had to wait for the uh, the umpire to give him the two finger salute before he went up. One Chilton guy actually just he, he whacked his hand saying he touched it, but uh, the goal umpire was uh, pretty certain from the from the get go. So was the Big Mac. Take it away, Gus. It was a fair delay from the Beechworth supporters as well. It was like they just kicked it out of bounds on the full, but it went straight through the big sticks. Well called, Roy McKinlay for Albert Onger MG. Back in the centre, 14 play, plays eight, Beechworth lead. Here's Cooper, gets another Mac Jack Shed's disposal as Mason kicks up the centre half forward. Big contest forms. Players just lurk around this ball now. Umpire's going to ball this footy up. Beechworth want to play Whoa. holding the ball, but the umpire, he was tempted. Whoa. He was tempted, but he Whoa. said, give it here, we'll ball it up 50 from home. He had a big peep, Gussie, didn't he? <laughs> it's Pato, isn't it, umpire Patterson? No, no it's not, actually. I've got it? the umpire's names here. And We've got one of the best umpires in the in the whole league at the moment, Gemma Chelmelski. She is outstanding. We've seen her perform at Ovens Murray Seniors in the. Um, well, I know she. I thought she was out there. I don't think she is. There you go. Yes, she is. Are they running the four today, Freaky or? Uh, boundary umpires. 
No, I don't know. I'm, I might have my numbers wrong here. My I only saw free three kick. warm -ups. Yeah, free kick, Mark Doolan. Anyway, he's going to have the shot on goal. And on range, Scoot. Oh, close. No, he's going to go short. Boxel's there. He was held without the footy. Oh, Ooh. play on was a call. Umpire had a good look at it. He's hovering. He's hovering. He says, give it to me. Gee, I reckon Boxel had a case there, Gus <laughs> McLeod, but no avail. The umpires have been a little bit hot and cold, let's just say, and we'll find out where the line sits as this first quarter progresses for Elders Rural. Hope you're enjoying the coverage this afternoon. Meyer out of the ruck. His kick was partially smothered. A few players track this towards the boundary line. Doolan for the Swans gets amongst the action. On hands and knees is Kane Scott, and the umpire says we'll ball it up 40 metres from Swans' goal. If we do an Atura Aubrey netball update in the under 13s this morning, Talanga to 23, Thaguna 21, Yakandanda 37, Wodonga Saints 32, and the under 15s. So Meyer flew high. Jeffries brought it to ground level, and it spills out of bounds for a boundary throw. And we go boundary side. To Charcoal Kings with Scott William Fraser. I didn't get back to Robbie before, but uh, I think that's just a little bit too far out for Doolan. I'd, I'd really like to see him a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think Dools would like that too, but he, <laughs> he was forced out. Here's Meyer, took it out of the ruck and did a check side kick, top of the gold squares. Whistle, whistle. he got one high here. Beachworth are going to get it. And they'll kick it to the middle of the ground. That's a great kick. Finds Cameron Fendick. Fendick looks for Surrey, and he takes a low ball in the half volley. Got a push. Oh, got away with one there. I reckon it might have been a bit of a shove. Humphrey says, I'll take it. He crosses his arms and says, that's it, Gussie. Brad Freak, then it'll be Gus McLeod. On you came off your mark, kicking long down our broadcast position. Middleton straight off the bench and slots in behind the footy, takes a really good intercept mark. But this is a really important kick here, Robbie. He's got to get it right. Yeah, and he goes the long option, Gus, in there. Num numbers with Chilton at the moment. Lappin was clever. Can he get rid of it? He didn't have much prior opportunity. The umpire let it go. I don't mind that. Gee, that's a big scrum of footballers around that ball. And this is what Beechworth are trying to do here today. Close it down. Every contest is going to be hard fought. Try to bring some physicality. Here we go. Middleton got the tap. Food traffic. Here's a chance stepping. It's eaten. Couldn't get it out. Now here you go, Chilton. Kyle Cooper was clever. On to Hibberson. High up and under. Sitting under his mire. Might have been held off the footy. Whoa, he hit his old man, or his own player almost there. And that was great work, Beach were in the sense. Mitchie Anderson, and they clear the ball to centre wing, Gus, but gee whiz, the pressure is red hot. Oh, it's red hot indeed. Working hard is Dolney, free kick and a whistle. It's off the play, freaky for Charcoal Kings. Yeah, it was but the umpire that was, what, about 80 metres away paid that one. He must obviously have a much better view of it than the, the umpire a bit closer. So McGee's the recipient, and he's going to kick the centre half forward. They have numbers, one of whom is Meyer. Wasn't expecting it, Brilliant. but got it inside forward 50. Doolan gets a nice bounce, tries to go over the top. Beechworth are trying to be cute here. Cooper gets the ball back in board, working hard as the inclusion oh. swindles. And the kick from Doolan is just A1. They worked incredibly hard to keep that footy alive. Swindles and co. And Mark Doolan, cool as a cucumber, finished the job. Yeah, beautiful work there by the Swans. They just kept the ball moving in, in, in motion and just didn't allow it to stop and just kept moving forward. Big punch by Scotty Meyer on the 50 was the difference there. Just got the ball deep inside their forward 50 and a really nice snap over Mark Dillon's shoulder to get his first of the day. And it never looked like missing no. as soon as it came off the boot. But geez, I tell you what, Swindles into the side uh, with that injury. You know, that's exactly what he's there for. And you could see the Chilton bench just went crazy as soon as he got that uh, well, a goal assist. On him, Scoot. He's all free kick, going to go the way of the. Uh, it's not the bad miss, it's Belchi. Loft the left foot. Looks for Surrey. Kate, can't mark it. Comes to ground. Ball loose, and it will be a ball up. So, Beachworth deep into attack. 14 all here. Really good start to this game. Both sides having a crack, Gus. 30 out from the Beechworth Gold. There'll be sore boys tomorrow, whatever the result. This first quarter has been hot.
Hibberson for the Swans. His handball is ordinary. Mopped up. Defensive 50. Bit of a This is Jake, he left it behind. Now Beechworth have numbers. The umpire's going to call for the ball here and we'll ball this footy up. Dolney was a bit slow there, but umpire said it was all fair, Big Mac. 21 yep. minutes gone for Jap Odongs. This is a hot first quarter. He's been active, uh, Dolney, so far today. And back at the footy again, might have been held without it. Play on was a call. The umpire, who, ooh, there's a little bit of a late roll, like a, a crocodile roll up in the Northern Territory in one of those rivers where you don't want to swim, Gus. Here. Tell you what, they'd have a good feed with me. <laughs> and handball over the top was good. It almost went inside forward 50. Coming through hard there. Looked like a Surrey. Brenton it was. Over the footy. Kerry was good. And we're going to have a ball up. It's right in the middle of the No, a free kick. He's plucked one out. He, geez, he'd, he'd be a nervous gunslinger in the Wild West. And, and he's given 50. I reckon he might have told him something there, Scoot. I don't know about what you reckon, but that's a fair old... And now... Where's it going to end here? <laughs> it just keeps on going. Chilton will score a goal. No worries, Mitch Hemming. I can't believe my luck, he says. The free kick started at half back and he kicked the goal from half forward. Chilton take the lead, 3-2-20. Beechworth, 2-2-14. We have gone 21 minutes on the Japo Donks time clock. What yeah. do you make of all that, mate? Um, but certainly very worthy of uh, of his position today. On it the Mac Pato, isn't it? He's had a haircut. On the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, Connor Stone hasn't had a disposal yet. Came into the game with a bit of an injury cloud. He has played a bit of time forward. One to watch for the, the Bush Rangers as the game wears out. McGee won the tap down. Coming through there was Ben Jones. Ball, so a little bit unlucky there. Ben Jones with the recipient. I don't think he actually knew it was his free kick. Lappin's on the overlap here. He uses him and he comes through the corridor. This looks threatening here for the Swans. Inside 50. Doolan! <laughs> Kicked it into the space and Mark Doolan. All he had to do was run into it. Takes a simple chest mark. He'll have a set shot. 40 metres out. Slight angle. Beautiful work there by Finn Lappin off the half-back line. He was really good last week in their win, I thought. As the game wore on, he really grew into his role. And really good work there from, from Lappin off the half-back line, giving that quick entry forward and duel in the right place at the right time. He's looked lively today as big duels. This for his second. Right foot kicks a ripper. The Swans kick three consecutive goals and they extend the margin to 12 points on the commercial club Aubrey scoreboard. 4-2-26. To Beechworth, 2 2 14. Robbie, you've been here quite a bit, mate. How good does it look when you've got a half backman like Finn Lappin yep. charge through the centre and get an inside 50? We, we saw yesterday Demizio the way he did it uh, at, at will. Um, it, that's where Chilton are going to. Been able to do that. Hibberson's left foot kick high up and under. Mitchy McLean went hard at it. And he's been rolled over there. Tristan Stead. And the ball's not going to come out. Freaky, what have we got? Round the grounds, the uh, first elimination final today. Wodonga and Wangaratta Rovers. What's the update? Yeah, in that game of quarter time, it is Wodonga lead 26 to 9 in that game of taking the early lead to Bulldogs. Beechworth go inside forward 50. A kamikaze style ball. Belchie's lurking so sorry. He kept his foot in, but the umpire said free kick for a leg. Yeah. It's going to go the way of Cade Surrey. And for a left footer scooter, this will certainly favour him. 25 metres out, slight angle. The breeze is going across his left shoulder, so you might have to aim it at that right, uh, the left-hand goal post. And just try and swing it back in line. I really and like he, his move forward. Yeah. He's a Lee Masters type that we've seen in the O&M, and when they put him forward, it normally pays dividends. The Bushies would love this on the Eber quarter time. Cade Surrey, can he kick his second? You bet he can. Straight through the big sticks. A Union Hotel goal today. 
and it's just what the doctor ordered for the Beechworth Bush Rangers. At quarter time, they move to 3 2 20 to Chilton. 4-2-26, a cracking first quarter thanks to Elders Rural. We'll take a break here at the MCG of the Bush and bring you the second half on the other side. It's the Duns Twin City Cranes TDFL Finals where you won't miss a thing. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Duns Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Duns Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. Season C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Computer that won't crash? Need your Wi Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. WangarataComputers.com.au. Ride it, space it, and erase it. Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. The job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City Cranes! For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City Cranes! 
Hello and welcome back to the MCG of the Bush. Quarter time sees Beechworth trail by just six points to the Chilton Swans in what has been a fantastic start to this game. We'll go to Brad Freak uh, on our Mac Jack Shed stature, but also to give us our BUR quarter's best. Yeah, quarter's best for that first quarter. We'll start with the Beechworth side of things. I thought Campbell Fendick for them was really good, really outstanding. He showed all his class as to why he was the Barton medalist through the week and he really performed well for his team in that first quarter. For the Chilton side of things, I really like Finn Lappin's game off the half-back line. He's run and dash and he's been really good and he's just com com he's just had competes down there. It was outstanding. If we have a look at the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet in that first term. A little bit of a start with the team stats. Very even in the inside 50s. 10 for Beechworth, 8 for Chilton. But obviously the Swans been able to take a little bit more advantage of that when they go and have six scoring shots in the first quarter. If we have a look at the possession all getters, uh, Campbell Fendek, as we said, is leading disposal getter on our stat sheet. He's had nine touches in the first quarter. Five for Alessandro Bel Belchi, four for Tristan Stead. And on the ch uh, Chilton side of things, six for coach Brad Hibbert. Suggested in and out, but what he said, he said, I think we've weathered the storm, basically ready for him to run over the top. They want to get it out of the stoppages, get it clear, get that running game on. Tom Cartledge, on the other hand, who uh, we haven't spoken about, but got an exemption after his suspension. Yeah. A bit like Ben Reid in the O&M uh, previously. I don't mind that, mate. He's yeah. still allowed to coach. Yep. Forenz Ed Aubrey. Big Mac, hit it for the second quarter. I'll hit it, Gussie, my word, and we'll, we'll get an update now and then as soon as we can. Through the centre, Chilton will get it towards half forward. Cole, oh! oh! Cole Cooper has copped a big high shot there from Braden uh, Carey. Whoa. There's a few Swanee boys coming for him now. Yeah, he's up, the young fella, and good on him. He's a tough little nut. Yeah, and you can hear well, we a bit of feedback. Here comes Kyle Cooper. He's been told to run. The good news is Kyle Cooper is up and about. He didn't milk it for anything. He's a... Kerry coming through hard. He answered the call. Kicks it into half forward. Connor Stone flew high. Ball breaking free here. No, it won't. It just won't quite get out. Too many players over the footy. It ain't coming out. And whistle. Now it will, Gus. Free kick. It's going to go the way of Brenton Surrey. And he goes on to Fendick. Inside 50 for the Bush Rangers. Out the back. Stone. He's resting deep forward. Bertram's going to have to go hard. Surrey dives on top of the footy. It's a hot contest. And the Chilton Swans are happy to concede some ground here. We'll cross boundary side for the Charcoal Kings to Scooter. There's a bit of spice in this contest after the first break. Certainly is, and the Chilton locals have got a bit vocal after that hit by uh, Carey there, so certainly we'll get a bit willing as the game goes on. Off half back. Kick on intercept mark by Hemming. Brad, what do you got, mate? Yeah, just watching Connor Stone that last that last contest in the forward half there. You just saw him go to tackle and he just was holding that uh, that right shoulder after yeah. it. I don't think he's in a good way. He looks like he's going to be playing more in the forward line. He's been a, v a vital player for the Bush Rangers this year in their in their midfield, so they're going to miss him today, even though he'd be in the half at the forward line. Van Claveren got it on to Lappin and Lappin with a surging run kicked it to centre wing. Oh, slipping over there was Mitch McLean. Opens up a chance here for Jacobson, but he can't beat the boundary line. Right in front of the Duns Twin City crane there. It's be a boundary throw in Brad Freak. Let's go around the grounds. In the Ovens of Murray in the elimination final, it's uh, Wodonga that lead that game by 15 points, 32 to 17 early in the second quarter. Seriously good boundary throw in from Whoa. that young gentleman on the outer side. Ball just spills towards the half-back line here for Chilton, or the forward line, I should say. He spills out of bounds for a boundary throwing. He's our little man, really. He is yeah. the best boundary umpire. Oh, he's the guy from the O&M. He's yeah. the best in the business, this young fella. Have a look at this, Scoot. This is what you call a great boundary throwing. Look at that. Magnificent. Get him into the AFL. he do a better job than half of them. Back <laughs> live here at Sandy Creek. Big tackle applied there by Jaden Vandermeer. Given court, boys. And he's going to pay a holding the ball here. Scoot, talk us through that. Yeah, oh, it would just look like Whoa. it was uh, no prior opportunity, I suppose, oh. but uh, Pato's right onto it. So it's going to be Vandermeer to kick the Swans in towards the hot spot. McGee! I thought he had a good enough piece of that. Comes to ground level. 
Fendix working really hard. He's going to have to beat three or four Swans here. He does so beautifully. Kicks out trying to find Cartledge. He gains possession. His right foot kick was touched off the boot. And the umpire didn't see it. He's going to pay it out of bounds on the full. It's going to be a... Half forward, McGee from behind. Couldn't quite take a great outdoors mark of the day. It came to the bottom of the pack. A lot of players. Oh, another free kick to trip here. Paddo's picked one out. So it'll be Mitch McLean off the left foot. Kicks it into half forward. Over the back. Kyle Cooper will run in and kick it over and goal. Chilton love it. He's got a couple. And Chilton now are starting to put a little bit of space on the game. I think they've kicked four of the last five. They lead it 5-2-32, Beechworth 3-3-21, three, three, and we have gone four minutes on the Japo Docks, jo Japo Donks time clock. Sorry, Simo, you that's get the, a good tie there. That's the class of Chilton, boys. A turnover there. second quarter that takes him to eight for the game and there's a couple of goals as well. He's a good player Cooper, an absolute star. I reckon Stead's been taken high here but the umpire's going to put the whistle away and say we'll ball it up. We'll try and get Stead's numbers in the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet, Freaky. Yeah, he's had four disposals, hasn't had a disposal yet in the second quarter but only early in this second term. So up in the ruck, both ruckmen left it behind, Fendick comes through, got a handball over the top to Cartledge, inside 50. Around here, Stone's going to have to be clean. He evades some tackles. Punching it forward was Surrey. Now it's Stead, wrapped up in a Brooks tackle. The umpire said it was fair, but the Bushies boys, well, they were probably appealing for a bit of a high free kick. Well, Damien Patterson looked like he was putting a hand to his shoulder there to give it high, and uh, Alan Sandro Belchie couldn't talk him into it. Brooks over the footy, tackle. There by Lee. Takes the mark, kicks it inside forward, 50, over the back it goes. Ball might fall away, Belchie, Lappin was brilliant. Knocked the ball out, regathered, might go on a run now. Inside handball was very nice indeed. They'll make the swindles, they'll move it further down. Sorry, it was Ethan Ritchie. They've got a heap of room here. Hemmings ran onto the footy, took one bounce, ran his full measure, someone's down. Yep, Whistle, Brad, what'd you see? Yeah, I saw that. It was the, the Beechworth player, and then it was Boxall down there in that forward half, Caleb Boxall and Mitch Anderson. And that yep. Boxall was actually on the ground. Oh, that's when I noticed him, got up, went to lead, and Mitch Anderson just tackled him straight to the ground. Clear free kick every day of the week. So there you go. Good spot there, Brad Freak. He's always number one, Robert. Indeed, and Boxall. Just readjusting the shorts, the shirt, the socks, and the mo. Just gave that a little bit of a tweak. 35 out directly in front, kick on the way. Ugh. Missed it to the right-hand side. We saw that a bit yesterday, Scoot. You have a theory on it. I'll give you the score, then you give me your theory. Beechworth, 3-3-21. Chilton, 5-3-33. We're doing it for NZ Aubrey. What's your theory, Scoot, on that oh, miss? Is the ball a bit flat? Is that what you're getting at? I thought you had to talk about that little fading Don't, breeze. Oh, there is a slight Zephyr, but it was almost behind him as he kicked it. A Zephyr. But it's just missing. It's across the face for a minor score. Chilton doing all the attacking in this second term, thanks to Inspiration's paint. They lead 5-4-34 to the Bush Rangers, 3-3-21. Five inside 50s in this second quarter on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet for the Swans. They've just been really dominant in that area and just heading repeat entries just like they did last week. Brent Ryan brought the ball back in and, well, Geordie Eaton thought he was going to mark it, but it was a good defensive punch from behind by Finn Lappin, who covers a lot of ground. He's just retreating now back towards centre wing. You get that kick behind the play. And he's got no one around him, so they've set up beautifully behind the ball here, Chilton. Over the back is Cartledge. He might run under it. He
down in dispute. Picked up by Fendick. Kicks it into half forward. Great fist from behind by Chilton. Bit of a push there. He's going to get it too. Dylan Pritchard. Gus gets a free kick. 70 out from goal. Wants to play on quickly. Kicking into the pocket. They can raffle this one. But taking it, I think, is Big Stevens. It is. And we've seen he can kick the journey today, but accuracy isn't always his best friend. Looks like Deegan Dogney, boys, is just coming from the ground in the middle of the, from that contest that was though mm. in there before. Took a big knock and took a while to get off, but he's just jogging off the ground now, holding his sides. So might have caught one to the ribs or even to the, the kidney area. You'll have a great view of this one. Watching on the live stream, I reckon our view is only the better one you'll get. Kick on goal from Stevens. It's across the face. Where's Middleton? Surrey flew high, brought it to ground level. Stead's tracking it. He does keep it alive just. Got a push in the back, Stead. Umpire is going to pay it the way of the Swans, in fact. And it looks like it's Medi Benny Mason will be the recipient. Deep in the back pocket, Robbie. He's going to go... Found Jake Cooper, centre wing. He comes inboard, sees McGee. He's got a little bit of room to move. Told to play on, drives it long. Doolan's there, took up front position. Goal, almost a good grab over the back there by Anderson. Whistle. Free kick, going to go the way of Beechworth at half back. They lead it, they trail it, sorry. 21, Chilton 34, and we have gone 10 minutes on the uh, Japo Donks time clock, Gus. We're doing this one for NZ. Well, we certainly are. I've liked this guy's game, Big Stevens. Working very hard. Chilton have numbers. They're going to come inboard. That was good from Van Claveren. Kick was okay. Fendick applied a good tackle on Hibberson. Van Claveren comes through once again. That was Dylan. Kicks inside, forward 50. Here are the Swans. Cooper. Cooper. It's Jake. And he can't quite hit the big sticks. They're doing all the peppering inside forward 50 freaky. They're just unable to capitalise and it's keeping Beechworth in this contest. Yeah, seven inside 50s in this second term on the Mac Jack Sheds stat sheet. As we know in finals, often you need to just take your opportunity. I guess the thing for the Swans at the moment is that they are creating those opportunities and they probably feel like eventually the tide will turn and they'll start putting them through the big sticks. But as you say, Gussie, it's certainly keeping the Bush Rangers well and truly in this contest. Have a look at the kick here from Malsum. It's been a highlight of the day so far. Played on and he gets it between half whack and centre wing. Flying high there was Benny Jones gathered. And a little bit of hustle and bustle off the ball there between Cartledge and Hibberson and they poke each other in the chest. A shout out to Lisa Cartledge who's tuning in in Papua New Guinea this afternoon, Goodness gents. me. Good on you, Lisa. We're going global here at the TDFL. Just stay safe. I hope you might be up the Kokoda Trail. How about that? Oh, great handball from Doolan. Oh, McLean got buffered off the ball. He's been pinged for a throw. Have a look how demonstrative umpire Patterson is. <laughs> that is theatre at its highest. Take it away, Gus. Melson, he's the recipient of the free kick and some, well, yes, you could say Academy Award winning acting for oh, the umpires. 50. Oh, hang on, hang on. Ball's gone long down the line. The umpires are starting to lose a little bit of control here. Look at this. Just need to put the whistle away, in my opinion. There's going to be a downfield free kick. The ball's going to come inboard for It was an initial yeah. 50. Yeah. It Mark Dolan went over the mark, yep. boys. Okay, so I think it's going to be Melson who's going to be the kicker. It is inside 50. That's a chiseling ball, and it's a beautiful ball. Oh. I thought Pritchard had a good enough piece of that, gents. Falls out yeah. wide. Stead, he's got some work to do. Chilton have numbers. Now they bomb it out wide. That was okay from Hemming. It's a foot race. Belchie's working really hard. He's got some Chilton Swans to beat. Joining in on the action here is Patton. Umpire blows the whistle. It's for a high. It's going the way of Beechworth. And the free kick count freaky on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet is starting to go into overdrive. Yeah, five for Beechworth, four Ooh. for Chilton in this, third, in this uh, first quarter. Second quarter, I should say. But eight to Chilton in the first to four to Beechworth. So plenty of free kicks being paid out there today. They went backwards to Ryan, and then Ryan went across the centre wing and he's found Kane Scott right in front of the Duns Twin City Crane Tower. Oh, kicks a poor one. Intercepted easily by Caleb Boxwell. He read it superbly. Now they all have, look at all the numbers flooding back now. Boxwell's kick, oh, it's not that good either. Another turnover. Midfield was Jacobson, was beset upon. Chance here for Cartledge. He's got to get, he, here's a go for Stead. Oh, good football. Showed composure. Weighed up his options. Brilliant kick. 
Found Jordy eating it between half forward and centre wing. He has to move quick. He does. He sees the lead further afield. Might have been Pritchard intercepted though. That man again, lapping off half back, Gus. Got it on to Dylan Van Claveren, and the Swans are out of strife. Oh, it's a good kick in board. Vandermeer smelt an easy mark. Pinballs around on the edge of the centre square. Umpire will call for this one. Brad Freak and Atura Aubrey netball update. Yeah, in the A grade, uh, sorry, the B grade, I should say. Talangata have defeated Kiwa by one goal, 37 to 36 in that game. Gee, we've had some great netball results this afternoon, thanks to Atura Aubrey. Now he's stead for the Bush Rangers. Back live at the MCG of the Bush. Inside forward 50. Surrey's there at ground level. The Swans have numbers crumbing. Good tackle applied by Stone. Out the back of the pack is Bertram. Kicks out wide, but his kick was ordinary. The Bushies have numbers. They try to pepper the sticks. Surrey's on the line. He left oh. it through, but it was touched. He rolled the dice, did Cade Surrey. And Chilton have enough numbers to concede a minor score. 35 plays, 22. The Swans lead thanks to Inspiration's paints. Deegan Dolney's gone straight to the rooms, boys. Had a couple of minutes shaking his head to the trainers and gone into the rooms. Probably looks like he's uh, not going to play much further part after that hip industry in injury. It was a great kick in by Henry McCormack, and I reckon Surrey did the right thing. He, he rolled the dice there, let it go, and uh, it was only a bee's oh. whisker in a cheap brilliant <laughs> handball from Kyle Cooper onto Vandermeer. And his kick's a good one too. Found Jakey Cooper. Inside handball to brother Kyle. Kyle kicks it inside forward 50. Doolan Ooh. takes a good mark. Magnificent transportation of the... Soft hands. Just take it like that one grab. Absolute pure class. And this is what they can bring the Swannies to extend the lead out to a game high 19 points Mark Doolan oh -ho. kick on the way is magnificent Doolan has three he has 55 for the season and that lead all of a sudden stretches to 19 points and that is on the Inspirations Paint scoreboard this one quarter here we're doing for NZ Aubrey Freaky what do you got you it looks like you got something that's just going to knock us <laughs> dead here. No, five disposals from uh, Kyle Cooper with the Mad Jack Shed stat sheet. That was all set up by him. That little yep. party trick of a handball oh. over the back of his... A, a no-look handball, hit his player in the run, and then as soon as he, the, the Chilton players moved that down the wing, he's, he was off. He was the only person that was going to get that footy next Trying to find Fendick. Stone come off the centre square. The Chilton numbers around the contest is frenetic. Handball over the top was good from Meyer out wide to Hibberson. Has a bit of time, so he steadies and kicks inside forward 50. Oh. Doolan! <laughs> too big, too strong, Mark Doolan. An elite body and paint player today and a great outdoors marker today. Big Dools is going to go back for two in a minute. Do we think, Scoot, that they might have to be to have to think about potentially moving Cade Surrey down back if Dools is going to start getting on top of them? He took the words right out of my mouth, mate. That's <laughs> exactly that. Um, they need to clone Cade Surrey. Um, he's so good forward, but they need him back. You've got a beautiful picture of that one. It's fading right. Brad Freak called it early. Well, he saluted to me early anyway. Across the face for a minor score. Mark Dolan's kicked three goals, one. Chilton moved to 42, Beechworth 22. That's thanks to the team at Inspirations Paint, Big Mac. Yeah, they're a great crew in there too. Here's Meyer from behind. He's always going to do that, one. he? That's a, just a little percentage booster, wasn't it? Just he had a little word out. to Middleton as well and as he Mike, punched it out of his hand too. Yeah, he's got him covered at the moment. There's no doubt about that. Scotty Meyer. He played a rattling game in the elimination final. He's our little man, the boundary umpire, with the uh, one of the great mullets. If he keeps working on that, by the time he hits 18, Freaky, it will be sensational. Good I mate. hope he never cuts that hair. I like where it's going with that one. Eaton was good. Out the back there to Braden Kerry. He kicks hurriedly. Oh, Belchie over at it. Have a look at Brooks' class. Oh, quick kick there. It's tight. Dropped by... It looked like it was Brenton Surrey there. Yep. Now a good tackle there by... Vandermeer, he might get a free kick here. Umpire has been vicious on them today. Says, give it to me, fellas. Right in front of Scooter Fraser down there for Charcoal Kings, boundary side. Great tackle there. It was absolutely fantastic to get that stoppage. It looked like Beechworth were going to run away with it. 
ruck infringement. It's going to be against Middleton and Meyer. I thought it was a fair contest, boys. I didn't think there was a free kick. It's going to go uh, to him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I won't say anything about that. Inside 50 goes Middleton. Good contest and a good fist came via Garside. Inside 50, this is Van Claveren of the Ash variety, and he switches the ball beautifully. Mark's been taken by Mason. They're going to try and go out the scoreboard side wing. Ball's in the hands of Gray for the Swans. He's going to kick long down the line. Dangerous looking kick. Swannies have numbers out the back. Cooper, this is Jake. He runs onto that nicely and kicks long down the line. McGee. Got it on the second bite of the cherry, brought it down to ground level. Cooper comes through on the overlapping run. Was it a free kick? Umpire said no. The Swans just persist and get it inside 50. Cooper with a cracking tackle. Umpire's not going to put the whistle in his mouth now when I thought there was a couple of free kicks. Now they're going to swarm on this one. We'll ball it up. About 20 metres out from Chilton's goal. The pressure from Chilton was so good there. They just continued to work and work it up the ground. Yeah, I reckon they're one goal from crunching them here. They've just about broken them. Middleton won it out of the right, kicked it in a hurry. It's going to come back in pretty quick here, I reckon. Oh, handball. I reckon he got the call. Connor Stone was pretty clever there. And he's going to get a 1-2 involved there. Belchie was there. Stone needs to keep running. Surrey couldn't take it on the second bite. Ben Claveren has had a good quarter. Took the ball, he might get a high one. No, it's going to be a throwing in there. And just before on the wing out there, Scoot, young Jacobson overcommitted. And Jakey Cooper won the footy and then they got that break. So he just needed to mark his time a bit there, I thought. Certainly did. And then a great contest between Brett and Surrey and... Well, Middleton won the ruck contest. Beechworth have numbers. Spills out the back as the Swans intervene. They go inside forward 50 now. Good contest forms. Beechworth looked dangerous. Stone overran the footy. Spills towards the boundary line. And right in front of the Beechworth tent, gentlemen. And I reckon the Chilton boys would be getting a little bit of advice over there. Bit of feedback. Say, uh, they certainly would be. Brad Freak around the grounds. All Budonga MG. Yeah, half time in the ovens of Murray. Uh, Budonga lead by 16 points. 33 to 17 in that game. Vandermeer has got hold of the footy. But he's tackled immediately. So it's a 20 point lead here at Sandy Creek on first semi final day. We have gone 20 minutes in the second quarter for NZ Aubrey. And that time clock is for Simo and the crew at Japo Donks in Wodonga. They take it to centre wing now. From behind, McGee oh, launched yeah. from a long way back. A great outdoors mark of the day. They fling it now to Mitchie McLean. Kicks it inside forward 50. Doolan took a half volley. Mops up here. Chance for young Cooper. I think it was Jakey Cooper. A dribbling kick to gold. Keep going. Keep going. It's a goal. Jakey Cooper. Sensational goal. Union Hotel goal of the day. And he said to his brother Kyle, you can do it, so can I. And that is just sensational stuff. It was built up from the back again. And the Chilton Swans are playing some sort of quarter here in the first semi. They lead at 48 to 22. We've gone 21 minutes. Scooter, Again, how the about class that? of Mark Doolan. That ball went to ground. He just stopped it, tapped it out the back. And away they go. Just that momentum, that ball, it just kept going. It was, uh, it was always going to be close. Almost got touched. What a call from the Big Mac. Thanks to Aubrey Donger, MG. Middleton's been good since he's gone on the ruck, but there's not much around him. Now it's Meyer. He gets his hands on the footy and says, bring it on, boys. Kicks up to half forward. It's a genuine foot race. Tracking it hard is Carey. Ooh. Tracks it to the boundary line. I reckon that was out of bounds, boys. Umpire's going to let that one slide, and Carey's on top of it. will ball it up. We played 22 minutes here on the Jap Odonks time clock. A little bit slow to get up there with Mitchie <laughs> Hemming. He's a big fan of his own work, as he was telling us last week. Yeah. Really? Yep, he yep. said to Panda, go and watch that on the replay. That was pretty good oh, for that me. that was down here in the boundary yeah, line, wasn't it? it was. Whistle, free he's kick. Gonna, he's gonna pay. And he's going to pay a 50 freaky talk us through for Mac Jack. Yeah, I reckon the 50. For Yap. For Yap, or I think it might have been the, the ball back. Probably. Yeah, I reckon Scoot's on the money there. I, I reckon they're pretty hard done by that one there. It was... Pretty hot. I don't even think though the Beechworth players, uh, sorry, was up off the ground really, and the, the ball just bobbled out. Gee, it's a meek 50 metres. Have a look he's at that. In front. Well, it's going to be Hemming, and we know he loves watching his own work. This bloke, he's already kicked the one, and this to give him a game high lead of 32 points. He loves it off the boot. He's kicked two. The Swans move out to a 32 point lead, and Beechworth. Their backs are against the wall and they're facing back-to-back. -back. 
finals exits in straight sets. Yeah, the children really flexed their muscles in this second quarter, haven't they? And everyone's really lifted for them all across the whole, oh, across all of the ground. They've been outstanding. And one player that I reckon really has lifted in this second quarter is Kyle McGee. He's link work and he crossed half forward as well. He's providing a really good option for them. And he's just been able to give, give them first use of the ball, get the ball out, give them to their runners. And looks like Mark Doolan's coming off with the blood rule here. Boys, I'm not exactly sure where the blood might be coming from as he runs in front of He might just be tired, Bradley. Well, he might be. I think he's just tired, Brad. He's just knackered. <laughs> I won't call him what I called him last week, Big Mac. <laughs> Jeez, I wouldn't have, wouldn't want Freaky out in the field of battle deciding if you're dead or alive and you, whether you're going to go on with life or you're going to get put away, get the screen out. You wouldn't want to be a racehorse with Brad Freak. I hope you're a bit more compassionate towards your greyhound. But I don't know what Cash. is... I think Dules might be just there. I, I oh, just what think is he's it? knackered. He might be. There might be I a just little... think Dules is knackered. There's no blood whatsoever, boys. I don't know who called that one. But it is an hot. extraordinary <laughs> decision, wasn't it? Anyway, the news is that uh, Chilton mean business. They have kicked, I reckon, Gus, at seven of the last eight. I might get you to check you on your Mac Jack stat sheet and cut Freaky out of here. Oh, have a look at Brooks. How high did that bounce there? Halfway up the goalpost it hit. Jakey holds sway in the Cooper household with a classy finish. There's a poor kick in from full back. That is going to be out of bounds on the full because it didn't touch a player. Inside 50 goes Brooks and it's a good looking kick. And I reckon Jakey Cooper's marked this one. Tied up in the pocket. Big Mac, you're correct. Seven of the last eight going the way of the Chilton Swans. Wow. Gee, Brooks has been amongst it for the last five minutes, hasn't he? That Gutsy bit through the centre of uh, centre of the ground. Unfortunately, the ball hit the post, and then he's actually had that kick in to create this shot at goal. Jake Cooper bowled me out in the cricket grand final, <laughs> and he's missed. That shot's a lot harder than that. <laughs> Certainly is. He's kicked one goal, three, Jakey Cooper. And I tell you what, both these Cooper boys, Freaky, uh, they are serious talents coming through the ranks. Yeah, they certainly are. Kyle, he's obviously had the 11 disposals so far today and a couple of goals. And Jake's been outstanding for the Swans in this first half as well. Well, they just keep mounting the pressure here. They work it out the back here. Looks like it's uh, Kane Scott. Campbell put his teammate under a lot of pressure. Gee, you got to love the Chilton's approach to the footy at the moment. Scotty Fraser for Charcoal Kings. They've been fanatic, haven't well, they? As Hibbo said at that quarter time, we knew they'd come hard. They knew, we knew they'd want to get that congested footy, but just keep going and it'll uh, it'll come to us. And, and it certainly has. Siren sounds for half time here. Beechworth, they needed that one desperately to stem the run of the Chilton avalanche that is flowing here at Kiwa Sandy Creek. Chilton lead at half time, 8 8 56. To Beechworth 3 4 22. It was a big second term thanks to NZ Aubrey. And stick around because the Shed Company halftime show is coming your way next. It's the Dunn Twin City Cranes TDFL finals where you won't miss a thing. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dunn's Twin City Cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply.
Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Computer that won't crash? Need your Wi Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. Wangaratta Computers.com.au Wide it, space it, and erase it. Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Riggers, spotters, cranes Safety is our second name You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City No job's out of reach Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it No fuss, talk to us We'll help you get the job done We'll make your job a smooth one Dunst Twin City cranes and welcome back to Kiwa Sandy Creek. It's half time of the seniors game between Beechworth and Chilton. And at half time, Be uh, Chilton have a handy lead over the Beechworth Bush Rangers. 8 8 56 to 3 4 22. This is the half time show brought to you by the Shed Company. And I've got Scooter Fraser with me. And it's just an avalanche by the Swans in that second quarter, mate, didn't they? We thought it at quarter time it was a fairly even affair, but they really flexed their muscles in that second term, didn't they? The Swans and put a really good break between the two teams. A 34 point lead here at half time for the Swans. That's right, mate. Seven of the last eight goals. Uh, the, the last four, Kyle Cooper, Duell and Jake Cooper and Hemming, that, uh, they're really stretching the Bush, Bush Rangers now. Um, certainly look a lot fitter around the, around the stoppages and uh, they've just got some forwards that are on top really early, I, I guess, so far, I think. And it's not hands down. It's been a very, uh, very broad effort by the Swans, but uh, Finn Lappin, absolutely locking down that form of why he was chosen by the coaches in the TDFL team of the year. Yeah, well, he just he's run and dash off the half-back line. If you, if you look at the other end of the ground with, with the Bush Rangers, they, they really are lacking that bit of run and dash off their half-back line at the moment. But and it, and it is probably a bit all over the ground if you have a look also. Kyle Cooper, one of the highlights for me, Scooter, is the, his ability to work up the ground, and then when he runs back with the footy, back towards goal. He's almost unstoppable and he, and he uses the ball so well and his delivery into Mark Doolan in, the, in that first half at different periods was first class. That's right. On two occasions he's got the ball in front of the uh, the Bendigo Bank scoreboard over there and two kicks later he's on the end of it again. So work, work rate is just huge for uh, both the Cooper boys um, especially those two boys amongst all the Swans but uh, certainly at the moment in the middle Scotty Myers got... Uh, well, he's, uh, he's got the wood over Middleton when he's been in there and, and certainly around the ground as well. But um, he loves playing here, Scotty Meyer, and he's got the sunscreen on the bald head and um, 
certainly got the upper hand at the moment. Yeah, well, we saw it last week as well in the in their game against Barnawatha, Chilton. In the first half, I thought that the, the Barney Ruckman did hold Scotty Meyer quite well, but I thought as the game wore on, he's just class and ability really shone out and that's when the Swans really started to get on top and he was giving the, their midfield the first use of the footy and uh, in that second quarter there I think it was really evident that they really got the first use of the footy. If we have a look at the Mac Jack Shed stat sheets, they had four centre clearances to none that's just straight off his ruck work and his ability to get the ball and move it forward. If we have a, a look at the Mac Jack Shed, uh, sorry, the, the, the stat sheet in that first half, it was eight inside 50s to 12, uh, 14 in favour of Chilton it was just one of the momentum that they were able to get it and their midfielders were able to get a hands on the ball as well in that second quarter Kyle Cooper as we touched on had six and Ashton Brooks who I really like his his game as well he's had the five disposals in that second quarter taking up to nine for the game and nine disposals for the coach Brad Hibbertson if we have a look at the Beechworth side of things really he's a bit of a lone hand from the Barton medalist Campbell Fendick he's had 14 disposals I think he's been outstanding just hasn't had a lot of help in that midfield today yeah he, he, look he's tough he gets in and under and he's always going to get the ball but um, he does he needs some uh, he needs some passengers at the moment, they're just, uh, they're just not presenting. Well, I think Beechworth have to roll the dice, and it's not just a move of Cade Surrey. I, I, they need something else. Mm. Something from Belchie in the middle. Um, I, I don't know whether there's a couple that are underdone. Yeah, we've talked about Connor Stone. Ed Cartledge has been sort of around it a bit, but when they've got the ball, the Beechworth on ballers can't really hit a target at the moment. They just haven't got the free-flowing movement forward where they can score as you say it's uh Scooter, if they do throw, if they throw, they can throw Kate Surrey to the back line, but then they're probably robbing something from the forward half, which is they need to be able to kick goals to get themselves back into the game. And if they sort of, I mean, as you, you said in the first half, mate, if they had two of them, they'd be laughing, but obviously they don't have one. Their best utilised spot for him, I think, going forward is going to be in that front half, and but that may cause them to lose by, concede more goals. So it's really a, uh, yeah. it's an interesting call for them to have to make here at half time. And I, I think in the second half, it'll really come to light how much Lockie Armstrong means to the Bush Rangers uh, in that forward line and, and, and I guess up the ground further when required. Um, yeah, I, you can sort of see the floodgates might open pretty soon, but I'm just hopeful that Beechworth can, uh, can do what they did in that first 15 minutes of the game, in the first 15 minutes here in this third quarter. Um, get themselves back in it and w we might have a game on our hands, but at the moment it's just all, uh, all Chilton at the moment. What are your thoughts on the first half, Robbie, of what, what we've seen in, in today's game? Yeah, look, I thought um, Beechworth came out. You could see it in their warm-up. They really, you know, they felt like they were, their backs against the wall. You know, the world was against them a bit. And they, they came in, they really put a lot of effort. They, they, their aggression at the football was good. Their pressure around the ball as well. But I think when they, they, they are a little bit banged up, they got a few pies out. And the, the trick was always going to be to maintain it. And I think I remember making a comment at quarter time that Chilton would be really happy to be six points up because they actually, the, they threw everything at them and they answered at Chilton. They held firm. Then they started to work their way in the game. I thought it was a really professional performance the way they handled that first quarter. Chilton, they never panicked. And then they got rewarded in that quarter. That quarter there, they kicked four gold six to just two behinds. Mm. And I think a lot of that you can attribute to the really good work they did in that first quarter. Because Beechworth came out and, you know, Beechworth... Back into the game, Freaky. I think, mate, they've nearly got to kick the first two or three goals this quarter, and that's going to be a big ask on this big ground against a very fast, efficient side like Chilton. Yeah, well, it's going to be just be a, a case of them chipping away at this at this this lead. You're not going to expect them to knock it all over at once, and if they do, they may spend all their petrol tickets trying to, to yep. get back into this game. And if we just have a quick look at who have been the goal scorers in that first half, Mark Doolan's been outstanding in the fourth half. He's kicked three goals for Chilton. Two to Mitch Hemming, two to Kyle Coop, stat sheet. One to Jake Cooper, his brother as well. And for the Beechworth side of things, Cade Surrey's kicked a two and Liam Stevens has kicked one as well. So it's plenty to play, obviously, plenty on the line here for, for um, the Bush Rangers here. I do expect them to come out with a bit of life and yep. really attack the contest in this first 15 minutes of this third quarter. But as you say, Robbie, if, if they 
don't get those goals on the board and the Swans are able, Gussie, to put those couple of goals on the board, you could feel like that they might be able to put, the Swans might be able to put this one to bed fairly quickly in yeah, the second half. Absolutely, but don't expect Beatsworth to roll out the no. exact same thing as what they've done in the first half. It's clearly not able to, to match what Chilton are doing. I think they've got to go with a little bit of a Pagan's Paddock type of a theory, whether it's a whether it's a Surrey or, or whether it's a, an Eddie Cartledge or even an Alessandro Belchi, someone to be a bit of a vocal point because every time they've gone inside 450, the Chilton back six have just slaughtered them. Finn Lappin and co zoning off their, uh, their attacker and whatnot. They're just making it look too easy. So it's a big, big second half coming your way next on the other side of the break. It's the TDFL finals here on 2AY. Hope... Good work, boys. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dance Twin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dance Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Cranes! CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can... Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Computer that won't crash? Need your Wi Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. WangarataComputers.com.au. Hold, it, space it, and erase it. Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL.
hope you get the job done We'll make your job a smooth one Dunn's Twin City Cranes For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes Safety is our second name You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City No job's out of reach Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it No fuss, talk to us We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Cranes! Forty-two, and in the under fourteens, the Akandanda were pretty dominant. Kicked five-five to zip in the first quarter against the Rutherglen Cats, and went on to win eleven-nine seventy-five to five-five thirty-five. Freaky, we can confirm that the Beechworth Bush Range have only sent two to the bench, which means we believe Deegan Dolning is done for the day. Yeah, it looked that way. He did, did take a real heavy knock in the, in the marking contest. He was holding his side. It was, it was lower side, so I don't know if it was maybe even around his kidney area. It didn't look good. He was on the ground in a fair bit of pain, and he did get off and walk off the ground under his own accord, and as Scooter said down there on the bench for Charcoal Kings, he, he did look to hover around, but then they did take him into the rooms, but it doesn't look like that he has re-emerged at the moment, so we can only assume if he hasn't come back out with the team at halftime that he may be done for the day. One other move as well. It looks like Connor Stone got straight in the middle of the ground, so they're going to give him a crack in this third, third quarter. Here we go. The third quarter is underway. This is thanks to Wiesners of Walla Walla and Wodonga, and this is Robbie McKinlay. Here goes Middleton up against Meyer. Stead at the footy, tracked it, tackled the opponent. Scoot, what phrase have you noticed anything to start the third quarter? Well, while you and Gus were having a little break there at half time, the Freaky and I said uh, what happens, and uh, we sort of mentioned uh, the Bush Rangers needed to flick the switch. Cade Surrey's gone down to full back on Mark Doolan. Well, Cooper, in the meantime, has taken a mark. It's Kyle at centre half forward. He plays on. He'll go close from here. Kyle Cooper, low penetrating kick, and it's well read by Stead, who got back and timed it, and he kicked it long to half back. There's two number 12s out there, is there? Am well, I seeing things? Kate Surrey down Kate here, Surrey. Tisted. Yeah, there we go. Take it away, Gussie. Uh, uh, it is Fendick who's got it at half back and finds Middleton. And Middleton's working his way up the ground here. This is what you like to see from their forward line. They're going to have to try some new things and, and create some new leading patterns. Middleton kicks long down the ground. Big contest formed. Flying high was Anderson. They got some runners over the top here. That was well done by Fendick in the 1 2. Now he's been wrapped up in a tackle. I reckon he got rid of it by hand, but the umpire. Pies pinged him for holding the ball. Yeah, it looks like just really good run there. Like the start from them, obviously Mitch Anderson's gone down into that fourth line in this third quarter. As it looks like he swapped spots with Cade Surrey down there, so looking to give them a bit of a different look in that forward half. So it'll be Ash Van Claveren or Someone, half back. There's a chocolate bar at True Sunderland, I just saw Robbie. that. A what? There's a chocolate bar. <laughs> a chocolate it's bar. It's a cherry ripe bar. It is too. The umpire's <laughs> trying to throw it off the ground. I'd eat it. I can throw it off the throw ground. Throw it up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, through traffic there, Braden Kerry. He was trying to get one high. In fact, he's going to get pinged. So it'll be Brooks who made the tackle. And Brooks, there yeah, is a cherry ripe, actually. Okay. I don't mind a cherry ripe. Cooper. Kyle dropped the chest mark in the end. Jacobson fumbled the ball and he's been pinged for incorrect disposal and it will be Kyle Cooper who's claiming the ball. Mark Doolan will kick it back to him. He's, well, he's going to be 55 metres out from goal. Too far to score, I think. McGee looks dangerous to you, Robbie. He does. He's lurking at the back and he's got a bit... They'll go short. Looks for Doolan. Found him. No, play on to call. Stone got a handball. Now they get a barrel towards...
Swans, he's up against Jeffries for the Bush Rangers. And Jeffries has done well to see the ball out of bounds from a boundary throw. And a Chura Aubrey netball update with Brad Freak. Yeah, big blowout there. Uh, uh, Faguna have gone up by 10 in that game, 23 to 13 goals. There was only a one goal difference a quarter time, but the, the, the dogs have blown out there. And a quick run, Gus and Hume League. Ram Wobundry Waller Giants 50, leads CDHBU 45. Wow, good game out here, out there, I should say. And a pretty good game here. Beechworth just need the next couple of goals, and they're still right in this contest. We've played three. Well, just over three minutes, thanks to Simo and the boys at Jap Donks in Wodonga. Meyer and Middleton. Meyer had the good spot, palmed it down. So no real advantage. We'll ball the footy up. True centre wing on the outer side of the MCG. The Bush, hope you're enjoying the third quarter, thanks to Weasners. And for all Wodonga MG, is the Big Mac. I forgot to start my clock, Gus. So I'm Lucky to I've got mine going, chip Robert. Chip into your one, my friend. Hemmings tracks after the footy. Can't find it, though. But don't care if you don't tip that over the fence there, Gus. I can yes. see that landing yes. very awkwardly. Be, look at that time clock is placed superbly. Three minutes and 50 seconds have gone. And on the commercial club scoreboard, no real change. It's 56 to 22. Chilton lead Beechworth. Cooper was there as well. Vandermeer as well for Chilton. And we're going to have another boundary throw. And so he's been busy, the young man with the mullet. I noticed him at lunchtime there. He was hoeing into a couple of sandwiches and a few slices. A young fellow, Gus. He was, and I just compliment him on the great work he's doing. You went to the president's room again, again. for some cake and a cup of tea, didn't you? Sandwiches and a cup you invite of yourself in each time? Every time. I'm a life member in there, mate. <laughs> Meanwhile, Scoot Freak and I, we're just fending for ourselves, yeah. paying premium dollar for a good steak sandwich. Thanks to the crew at Barney on the barbecue. They were pretty good this afternoon. Pretty good. I probably thought it was pretty good. Eight and a half out of ten for my steak sandwich. Scoot, you had one as well? Yeah, I'd probably go on eight, mate. It was a little oh. bit of fat on the end of mine. I oh, just geez. didn't. We're you know. fussy, aren't we? Oh. Balls it, with Hemming for Chilton. He didn't pay for it. <laughs> Hemming going to be called to play on. Kick into the back pocket. Mark's been taken. Van Claveren. So Chilton playing a methodic brand of football as Garside has the Sharon in hand. Oh. Dangerous looking kick, but it works out okay. He finds Gray. He's got a chip kick on to Mason if he wants to use it. He ignores. He's going to go through the corridor trying to find Scotty Meyer. He had to work hard, but he got there. Meyer going to swing around to that booming left boot and go inside 50. Doolin's the target. Got three to beat. The Bush Rangers prevail. Little handball over the top there from Ryan. Was dangerous. Chilton have an opportunity now. Surrey's working hard. Goes by hand to Fendick. Exits defensive 50 and Pritchard marks of the Bush Rangers. Yeah, it's a beautiful kick. Pritchard got it back to Fendick. Fendick kicks centre wing. Target is stead. He paddles it. He's just trying to pick it. He got caught without the ball there. He'll get a free kick. True centre wing right in front of the Duns Twin City train. Uh, cranes, not trains. Gee, that's a massive couple of big towers. A bit of breeze picked up there, Scooter, for Charcoal Kings. Yeah, it's going straight across the ground now. So um, it is. Oh, we might see a bit, bit more of the footy over that side. Stead decides he'll bring it into half forward. Kick's not a good one. And... Finn lap and eats those for breakfast, Gus McLeod, and that's exactly what he did. Penetrating kick across the ground. Might be dangerous, though. Inside forward 50. Picked up magnificently there by Liam Stevens. Ball bouncing towards the gold square. Uh, they'll get out of trouble here, and it'll be Van Claveren who'll mark at half back, and he'll dish it off to the other Van Claveren. They've been busy, the boys, and it's a beautiful kick. Inside ball back to Benny Mason, but Mason will play on from there, Gus. It's a downfield free kick, and Mason's kick's oh. gone about... I reckon my steak sandwich is bigger than that kick. He's been wrapped up in a big tackle. I reckon Connor Stone or Stevens has driven him into the ground here, boys. Stone. It's going to go to Stone. Well, that 50. was a good tackle. A Ooh. Umpire was pinging those Ooh. in the first half. He's put the whistle away. Stone, one of his first Mac Jack sheds. Inside 50 is a great kick. And the mark's been taken. It looks like it's Belchy. And Alessandro will go back and have a set shot 45 metres out on a 45-degree angle. Boundary side for the Charcoal Kings. Scooter Fraser. up. Yeah, great, uh, great to get the ball back, actually, after that 50-metre penalty uh, for Beech uh, Beechworth gave away. So, a great shot at goal here. Belchy, left foot kick. It looks on line. It's touched, umpire says. Touched on the line for a minor score. Beechworth, three...
Great job off half back. He now he plays on. He runs his full measure too. Drives an awkward spinning ball towards centre wing. And Vandermeer sees oh. it out over the boundary line. Umpire Patterson's there just sorts out any little impending issues. And what's he done here? Patterson, look at that. He's taken over the role of the boundary umpire, made the decision, gave the ball back to the boundary umpire, and still given a bit of yap and advice. How about that, Gus? That was extraordinary from Patterson. I don't mind it, Robbie. I you've loved got, it. You've got to have some authority in these games. Jeez, his old man was a character. Wasn't he, uh, Scoot? Banjo. Oh. Oh. Love Banjo and Bull and Mannering umpire. Oh, It'll be more talk than whistle. <laughs> my God. We've played eight and a half minutes for Japo Donk. Stone it's, got taken high. It suited blokes like you, Scoot. Oh. He didn't like to deal a bit out and official them. 56 place, 23. Chilton lead. Inside 50. An average kick from McCormick. It's just a high up on it, but Lappin. G's been really good today for the Swans. He switches. He finds the co captain. Mason wants to go out wide and here geez, they go. Chilton are away here, Big Mac. They're off the races here, Gus. He might have been Hemmings out the far oh. side of the ground. Kicks it magnificently to McGee. Kyle Cooper, keep an eye on him. He's lurking at centre half forward at the moment. Kick in the middle of the ground is a good one. Brad Hibberson took a very good mark. Bush Rangers have got some numbers back. So now Hibberson had to stall his initial thoughts. Three on one. Ball came to ground, was Cole Cooper who did it nicely. Mark Doolan handballed it, a little bit of hit and hope. Good work there, inside kick was clever from Richie. Gee, that was a good kick. Ethan Richie and Mark Doolan will go back and have a shot for goal number four. Just probably a little bit of the difference in the sides there by Ethan Richie. Just the composure from either team going inside the forward 50. Just being able to, to find the target in Mark Doolan there was just simply outstanding with the Beechworth players coming at him and just really, really good composure there. And it's been a highlight of probably Chilton's day today. I'll just watch Scotty Fraser mark down gold number four for Mark Doolan already. He is so confident. Is that true, Scooter? Yep, without a doubt. You've got good eyes, Robbie. He's 40 metres away. Here comes Doolan. And Scooter has gone for the eraser, as they say in America. He's missed it to the left-hand side. Minor score. Scooter throws it down. Boundary side for Charcoal Kings. I might have put you under the bus there, mate. No, all good. Jeez, that was fantastic effort there from Richie to uh, get the ball back inside 50 and get another shot at goal for the Swans. Around the grounds in the ovens in Murray, a 30-point lead now to the Wodonga Bulldogs through the, halfway through the third quarter, 54-24 to 24 in that game. Tell you what, you wouldn't want to be coming home in the car with Dan Vaccaro. Back jacks, please, Freaky. He's up to eight to spot. Pritchard, he brought it to ground level. Coming through now is Belchie. Gets the ball under Surrey over the top. Here's Cartledge. The Bush Rangers need this. It's an awful kick from Cartledge. Probably the best result, though, if it wasn't going to be a goal. It's going to be a boundary throwing deep in the pocket. We've played 11 minutes here on the Jap Odongs time clock and Beechworth haven't kicked a goal since the 24th minute mark of the first term. The one thing they have done in this third quarter is they haven't allowed Chilton to score. So if they're able to get a couple, the next couple yep. of goals, they're going to be right back in this game. Great pressure there too. Benny Jones on Cartledge too. Just made him force the error a bit. No one in the gold square. Short boundary throw in. Is this Beechworth's chance? Umpire Patterson is lurking around. He's been heavily involved today, right amongst it. Tosses it up nice and high. Def taps there by Middleton. Nice sideways kick by Mitchie McLean. Now here's a chance out of the back. Oh, a nice little spin. Overcooked the handball though. Hibberson, they'll go wide. Watch Brooks run now. Brooks has got it out in the clear. Gathers it. Can he beat his opponent? Oh, what oh, class. Got around Eaton. Handball over the top. Inside out. Well done, Benny Jones. Little chip kick over the top. Kyle Cooper has it. He'll keep running. Kyle Cooper says, come at me, lads. Come at me. How about that for a bullet? Doolan, Gavers, handball. Brooks, one through two. Over the top. Here's a chance. Snap on goal. Misses by Mitch Swindles. Minor score. Great build up. 8 9 57 Chilton, 8 10 58 lead Beechworth, 3 5 23 and 4. Gussie, who we got you for? All be wrong, MG. Mimo it, and the boys. Yeah, Mimo and the boys. It's you, Gussie McLeod. Thank you. Mimo won't be watching today, but he'll be watching his young fella. And he's going pretty well for the doggies. We'll get Freaky to go around the ground soon, but we'll go for a netball update 
Thanks to Atura Aubrey soon as the ball goes out wide. Flying high. Good, good mark from Surrey. Thought he got a big enough piece. Umpire let it play on. Now it's stead for the Bush Rangers. Steaming forward. Chiseling kick trying to find Middleton. The big fella needs better service than that. And it's out of bounds for a boundary throw in. For Atura Aubrey, A grade netball with Brad Freak. Yeah, at half time, Faguna lead that game 26 goals to 17 in, against Chilton. Of course, Chilton had a good win last week over Mita. And Faguna suffered a loss to Yak in the Atura Aubrey netball. Back here, it's 58 to 23, Big Mac. And Yak beat Kiwa yesterday, guys. They did. Straight through to the big dance. Wow. Chilton, they exit the fancy 50. They look really good. They go long down the line. The mark's been taken. Inboard goes the handball, and they're out here on the outer side. Handball over the top, trying to find Cooper. He's got a few to beat, got a fist coming through was Kane Scott, but it wasn't good enough. Inside 50 go the Swans, and it goes back out. Wrapped up in a big tackle there was McLean. And we'll ball it up right on the painter 50. Boys, one thing that Bushy's probably need to do a little bit better, I've noticed a couple of times in this third quarter, Kyle Cooper's just getting free reign running mm. through the middle of the ground. and He's probably not the person you want to be running free without an opponent through the middle of the ground. Ben Jones got a lovely handball to Richie. Kick into Jack Gray. A sensational Union Hotel goal of the day. And well done again, young Benny Jones. But oh, Hibberson finished superbly. Scooter Fraser for Charcoal Kings. Oh, we talked about it yesterday, mate. I, I don't like this. He's kicked the goal and he's come off. Oh. Stay out there, mate. Kick another one. Well, he's the coach. He can bring himself back on, can't he? No. Oh. First goal for the quarter, boys. Great balk and a great goal, though. That was fantastic. He's up to the 13 disposals as well today. Brad Hibbertson on the Mac Jack Shed stat sheet. He's been outstanding. Four disposals for Kyle Cooper in this third quarter as well. Takes him up to the 15 for the game with a couple of goals. The real stars for Chilton are really standing up today. Game high lead of 41 points. Big Mac said they're already in the prelim final. It's going to be a big mission for Beechworth to come back from this. So there's a hope for Beechworth well, after me saying that, I'm, doesn't it, Scoot? Yep, yeah, I'm just trying to spark a bit known. more enthusiasm. I have history. <laughs> McLean inside 450 for the Swans. Doolan, I think it was, just brought to ground. In fact, it was Boxall oh. wrapped up in a big tackle, oh. free kick, holding the ball. It's going to go the way of the Bush Rangers. The recipient will be Melsom, the vice captain, and he's been pretty serviceable today. He kicks long down the line, not his best kick. The Swans have numbers out the back. They're going to go inside forward 50. Dangerous looking kick. Surrey hit him in the knee. Handballed out wide, trying to find a teammate. Richie, he goes in board. Kick on goal from the Swans. Looks pretty good. But Hemming has kicked across the face for a minor score. Chilton look absolutely dominant as they move to 9-11-65. Beach with a flat 3-5-23. That's thanks to the commercial club. He's having a very good final series, uh, Mitch Hemming. Just ask him, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, uh, we'll ask Panda. Panda will tell him, he'll tell Panda. Middleton's there. Oh, look at Jakey Cooper. He was first at the footy. He wanted it a little bit more there. Now the hurry kick by our man, Eddie Hemmings, former England Test cricketer, of course, was famous for having a pig uh, rolled out on the ground with uh, Eddie Hemmings' name on it. Remember that one, Scoot? Up at the Gabber, I think it was. No, they we had the same oh, equivalent. Holmes, he was a man who caught the cricketer. Oh, do Gold Square. An adventurous swing from Vandermeer. He tried to volley it in like one of those goals Tottenham Hotspur scored last night, Gus. But he had a swing and a miss, and he's got another minor score. I'm on the wagon there, aren't I? 9-12-66. Uh, see you later, Liverpool. Beechworth, 3-5-23. Tell you what I am enjoying, not getting abused by the fans below. It's nice having the, uh, the Chilton supporters hey, below us today. Hey, Gus, it's early days yet. Yes, yes. <laughs> Brad Freak, Mac Jack shared stats. Yeah, in this third quarter, <laughs> as we touched on Campbell Fendix, up to eight disposals for the Beechworth side. Alessandro Belchi and Tristan Stead have had three disposals each. Three disposals for Ashton Brooks in this third quarter and four each for Brad Hibbertson and Kyle Cooper. Fendick just sockers it off the ground up to half forward. He was looking for Anderson. He made a good contest. Lappin, oh. Lappin. I reckon he got disposed of that illegally. Big tackle applied, and the umpire says it was all fair, boys. We'll ball it up. 50 metres out from Beechworth goal. 70, 17 minutes gone, I should say. Thanks to Japo Donks. It's 66 to 23, Chilton lead. Hemming. Oh, another cleverly well-weighted handball. It's going to be tight. It is. Nice work there. 
number 42 was Caleb Bertram. Intercepted though and put down after he kicked it was Braden Carey. Jack Gray was the offender. There was nothing too serious in it. Boys, well, Henry McCormick went on about two minutes ago and he's just come off limping, so... I saw you, him earlier so. go out with a bit of a limp, Scoot. He might have been picked up something earlier and knocked it again. Belchi kicks the ball inside forward 50. Well, they'll easily defend this one at the back. The target was Meyer. Stephen showed him a clean pair of heels. Oh, great smother by Hibberson. He's just kicked a great goal that was nice and flashy. Now he does the hard thing, does the smother. That's why he's such a good footballer. In fact, it wasn't Hibberson because he's on the interchange bench. Ben he's coming off now. It was Benny Jones, number 41. The bloke he swapped with. If we go around the grounds for Aubrey MG in the ovens and Murray, Wodonga lead Wayne Grader over 61 to 25 late in the third quarter of that Ooh. game. I reckon that's going to be all she wrote down there, boys. The Dogs are going to get their first finals win in a very long time. We'll cross boundary side, Charcoal King, Scooter Fraser. Just having a look there, boys, with Henry McCormick. He's getting a fair bit of work on that left leg. So we'll keep you posted on that. Of course, the Bush Rangers are already down. The services of Deegan Dolney, who went off midway through the second term there, Freaky, with what looked to be a pretty nasty injury. Yeah, to the side, maybe even the kidney area. Mm. It looked like it was a big big pack mark he was involved in, and he certainly came off holding his side. It was his lower side, so maybe that fleshy part it doesn't certainly doesn't tickle. No, not at all. Back in the middle, Geordie Eaton head over the footy, hacked forward there by Connor Stone, up towards centre half forward. Working hard there is Anderson, but he left the football behind. The Swans have numbers and the overlap here is on. If the ball sits for Dylan Van Claver and they're away, it does. Dylan wants to find his right, not his best kick. Inside forward 50. Great set of hands in traffic. Chilton have numbers everywhere. They come through the middle. It. The kicks a penetrating one. Cooper took a lovely grab. It was a magnificent kick from Garside that came in from half back. Cousin of the boxer, Harry, he tells us pre-game. Cooper hit a barrel, mate. You can just about do anything. He decides he goes to the forward pocket. That'll be easily defended there by a man of the experience of Braden Kerry. Uh, Scoot, I want to get your thoughts for Charcoal Kings. Is Kyle Cooper in the top three most exciting young players coming through the ranks in the TDFL? Oh, without a doubt. And he was last year. So after yeah. last year's exploits, what he did, and now, um, I, I think he's probably the first magnet of the opposition coach that you go to and say, who's going to play on him? Stead, head over the footy for the Bush Rangers. Had no one to give it to, <laughs> so his left foot kick lands about a, a Rob E's diaphragm in from the boundary line. Ooh, what did they didn't like there, did they, Gus? Well, I can tell you right now, if that's deliberate, I'll walk home. Is that the rule doesn't apply out here, does it, Gus? It certainly doesn't. Well, you're lucky. I mean, Kicks the ball almost inside forward 50. Bertram's had a good quarter. They need a lift from somewhere. Over the footy there. Shoveling it out was Mason. Was fantastic to Van Claver. Now here's Brooks. He doesn't go though. It's one on one all around the ground. Jakey Cooper's got a bit of room. Nice chiseling ball to Jake Cooper. Kyle Cooper runs at the footy. There's Middleton and Middleton chops it off Gus and he drives it long off half back for Beechworth. To a three on one but the one prevails. It was Bertram for the Swans. Then he dropped the ball, made a big tackle and the umpire says we'll ball it up. Around hey, look, dogs are kicked away in that Doggies will be home in that game. I've got one foot in the minor semi-final take on Wang next week. Imagine Vaccaro. He'd be in a state, oh, wouldn't he? Oh, jeez. You would not want to live with him. The old bird box won't know it hit it. He'll be down in the song. He will he'll be in the song. <laughs> Who's he'll on the boundary down there today? Chris O? I think it's Sky today, so uh. he'll probably take the mic off of Sky. Back here live at Sandy Creek. Big tackle. That was good defensive work there from the Chilton Swans. It is everywhere around the contest. Beach where they're trying so hard, but they're getting nowhere. So, Gussie, well, that, look, that would then be a Wodonga Wangaratta first semi. At Bunton Park. Bunton Park, North Aubrey. And he's been held off the ball. 
by, has Jake Cooper, and I'm not sure if he's over popular with the uh, men in green, uh, Braden Carey, at the moment. I'm starting to get that feel, Robbie. Yeah. And umpire Patterson says Jake Cooper come around, and he chips it to Macca McGee. I've liked him, Robbie. He's been really yeah, good. Yeah, he's been good. And a good game last week, too, Gus. He, here's Harry Garside. He punches one. You get that, Gus? Into yes. half forward. Thank you very much. At the back is Cade Surrey. Oh, he's like Gus on the dance floor at the back in the day. There, he just spun around on a thripty bit and Hibberson marks. Hibberson's probably a bit too far to score. We have seen him kick a big goal today. Torp. Go on, hit the barrel. The torp. Hit the barrel. Hibberson's going to centre the footy. It's oh. a brilliant kick. Scotty Meyer, he can't quite get there, the big fella. <laughs> Opportunity for the Swans to snap on goal. It doesn't quite have the legs. <laughs> Hibbo's putting his arms up saying, come on, big fella, how Sorry. much better delivery do you oh. want to get? <laughs> and you probably missed that, boys, but Cade Surrey's punched that through the points. I think it's up at the Upper Sandy Creek Primary School when that <laughs> far up the hill. You might have a bit of time while they get the ball back. That Jeez, was one of the funniest things yeah, from Hibbo. He just couldn't go. He just couldn't get there, Scotty Meyer. He saw the jumper, didn't he? And he said, yep, I put it about there. That bloke runs onto it. And then he big, the, Scotty, he was like... He was like one of those hurdlers at Warrnambool, wasn't he, Gus? He just had nothing left in him about that six kilometre. After they've run four on, on the Tuesday. Brenton Long... Surrey worked well there with Kerry. They get at the centre wing. Garside. Oh, he dropped the ball there. Oh, he's got away. No, he hasn't got He has got away with it. Well, good on you. He just might have slipped one under the guard there. I reckon did Garside. Right in front of you, down boundary. What's the field like down there? Scooter amongst the punters down there on the boundary for Charcoal Kings. The Beechworth people are still a little bit vocal, but uh, it seems like the heat's died off in this quarter. Middleton took it out of the ruck, threw it with a high up and under the centre half forward for the Bush Rangers. Beats the lot of them, spills out the back. Numbers fall the way of the Swans. On the overlap, it's Brooks. Does he get a nice bounce? Whoa. Paddles it to himself. He got a bit of time. Brooks, he's going to go inside. 450, not his best kick. Leaving it behind was Scott. The clean pickup came the way of the late inclusion. Swindles as the ball spills inside. Forward 50. Hibberson lurks. Now Scott mops up for the Bush Rangers. He's going to go out to the outer side. Dangerous looking kick and the siren. Sounds for three quarter time here in the first semi final. Chilton looked to be home. It's going to take a minute. Good boys. Yeah, you're funny. Um, they have not scored a goal. Goal since Surrey's first yeah, quarter. Yeah, after Surrey. Yeah, yeah. Bill must be playing well. Just to see him miss it. Playing well. He's taking his took a piss in the last minute. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Done swing city cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes. Safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City. No job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it. No fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City Cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. 
Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Computer that won't crash? Need your Wi Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. WangarataComputers.com.au. Hey, why did space it and erase it? Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Riggers, spotters, cranes Safety is our second name You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City No jobs out of reach Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it No fuss, talk to us We'll help you get the job done We'll make your job a smooth one Dunst Twin City cranes We're well, about to cross boundary side of Scooter Fraser See what the umpires and the coaches had to say at three-quarter time. But first, we'll go to an Atura Aubrey netball update. Faguna lead 38 to Chilton 29 at three-quarter time. And Freaky, you've got some Mac Jack Shed stats for us. Yeah, in that third quarter, it was total domination by the Swans in that third quarter. then but it's Campbell Fendix probably not getting a lot of help Tristan Stead tried hard in that third quarter as well for the Bushies he had six disposals where yeah, Campbell Fendix as we touched on had nine for Charcoal King Scooter Fraser uh, Chilton coach Hibbo uh, basically said to the boys this is what we came for to show them what we're made of and get through to next week finish the job off uh, be clinical about it and get through it and uh, put the foot down on the other side of it it was pretty quiet at the Beechworth huddle. There wasn't a lot of talk. A few supporters <laughs> yelling out, don't go down without a fight. Um, hopefully that just means they'll uh, hit the scoreboard. But, um, yeah, the boys, uh, Carlidge and Kerry, were pretty upbeat about trying to get back into the game. For Talanga Construction and Maintenance, the final quarter with Robbie McKinlay. McGee in the ruck, won the tap against Middleton. They had not scored a goal since after the siren at quarter time, Beechworth. A goalless second and third quarter. Stead's been their best. Pumped it in towards half forward. Base of the pack. Chance here for Brenton Surrey. Handballed it off to Fendick. Fendick's kick was smothered. Surrey came back for another go. So did Fendick. Applied a good tackle. And it's going to be a ball up. It just quickly won at Wobundi. Ram Wobundi Walla lead. and went to Elliot. 
And Clancy Alec will have a set shot for the Bush Rangers. This will be their first look at goal since the 24-minute mark of the first term. This will be the perfect start for the Bush Rangers if there are any chance whatsoever to try and get back into this game. In they're just looking to get on the scoreboard, as you touched on there, Gussie. Haven't kicked a goal since after the quarter-time siren through Cade Surrey, so desperately need another goal in this game. Big kick for Ellett here. The left foot strike is wide to the left-hand side for a minor score. 3-6-24. The Beechworth Bush Rangers trail the Chilton Swans. Pickins and he drives it long. Middleton from behind takes a good grab. So this will go back in deep. No, he'll go backwards to Stead. He's tried his guts out today for Beechworth. Steady now. Why is he? he sees Connor Stone deep. Chance here maybe Stevens over the back. It was Pritchard, in fact. Here's Kyle Cooper tackled by Scotty. Scotty. And umpire says, I'll ball it up. Adjacent the boundary side. And a lovely touch there. Scott picks up Cooper. And I'll ball it up, Gus. 35 around from the Beechworth Gold. They trail 24 to 67. Last quarter action. Two minutes for Japo Donks. Gone in this final quarter. The mark out in front has been taken by Hemming. Who, of course, is a big fan of his own work. You watch that mark back. Little chip kick to Bertram. Works out okay. Good to see his headband has stayed the, uh, the any, course of time. Yeah. Any relation to America's Cup hero, Gus, you reckon? I couldn't even tell you who won the America's Cup for Thank us, Thank you, Robbie. Gus. Long kick down the line. Middleton flew high. Doolan ran into his back. Now Kane Scott comes through for the Bush Rangers. Handball's over the top. Oh. Big tackle applied. Umpire said nothing in it. Boxel kicks inside 450. Scotty Myers gone forward. Where's that delivery from Hibbo that he got on the eve of three quarter time? Pinballs around. Exiting defensive 50 other Bush Rangers. Melsom wrapped up in a dual and tackle. I reckon he's gone here. Oh. And the umpire says we'll ball it up. <laughs> Wowee. Big final quarter thanks to Tulanga to construction and maintenance. We played three minutes for Jap Odonks. Well, I love Pato. He's a good operator. He just keeps your heart in the mouth sometimes, doesn't he? He's good. He had the sun in his eyes in that previous yep. one, so... Well, um, wear sunglasses, I don't... And back to Garside, the boxer runs, beautiful pass, he blew a hole in the chest of McGee. McGee goes short, it's okay, Jakey Cooper, he'll play on from here, loves to run, eyes off his brother and finds him! Cole plays on, dribble kick, hit the post. <laughs> well, they've entertained today, those Cooper boys. They are good operators. Classy, nine goals, 14-68. Chilton, three goals, 6-24. It's a 44-point lead. Freaky, have you found anything that's just going to knock me dead to start this quarter off the stat sheet for Mac Jack? <laughs> Probably not, but Tristan Stead started the quarter well for the Beechworth boys. He's had a couple of early disposals. So has Campbell Fendick. They tried really hard for that. Give their, him their another side. one there too, Freaky to Fendick. Ball's in the hands here of Ellett. He's going to go inboard Ooh. to Stead. They had options yeah. on there. They ignore. They like to go inside 50 via the boot of Stead. That's a good kick to Belchi. This is too far for Alessandro to score. He's going to arc around, play on, kick to the fat side. Dangerous looking kick, but it's a good kick. The mark's being taken out there. And it looks Jacobson. Like it's, yeah, it is Jacobson. He goes inboard, oh. good kick. Good looking kick, and the mark's being taken by Connor Stone. Probably hasn't had the impact on the game today that he would have liked, but he can have a big opportunity to kick a much needed goal for the Bushies. Yeah, he's got that, that, that right shoulder strapped up. He did get a bit of a knock last week, and earlier in the game he was grabbing at it a little bit. He has spent a lot of time for... So Connor Stone kicks the first goal for the Bush Rangers since the 24th minute mark of the first term. 30 play, 68. Chilton lead. And that's on the X-Ray Group scoreboard. The one thing about B the Beechworth in this last quarter, they have started with plenty of energy. So it's not like, as we th you think sometimes, the game might peter out. But they're still going to keep trying hard, which is what you want to see. And as a Beechworth supporter, that's what you want your team to do, to play out the four quarters in this game. And if they, keep, if they get another couple of quick ones, you never know what could, might happen. 
Yeah, nice finish there from Coniston. Good stretching mark as well. So we're still going to be McGee, who's gone into the ruck. Just giving Scotty Meyer a rest, who's down in the gold square. Just sunbaking at the moment. Kick off the ground was by Benny Jones. Cartledge, Ed, got it. He's tackled by... pretty much have a rest on the ground. Middleton got the tap. Fendick was hanging around like a seagull at the MCG. Put his head under the ball. Well done, Hemming. Got it back to McGee. Back to Hibberson. Kicks the half forward. Not a bad kick. A diving, a slips catch attempt there by Kayla Boxall. You like that cricket connotation, Scooter? And it goes over the back and Van Claveren. Ash does well. With a, oh, Ooh. kick's not that great. Gussie turned over. Connor Stone's kick was smothered. Yeah, his kick was smothered. Now Anderson regathers back onto Stone. Finds the right boot. Great kick to Fender. Gets a bad bounce, but the Barton medalist steadies on goal. Free kick. And it's a free kick oh. for a high. It's going to go against Beechworth. I'm not, I'm As not. Campbell Fendick fell to the oh. ground. I'm sorry, you cannot pay that. He fell over when he How? was trying to kick the footy. Unless he's pointed the wrong way. Well, Lappin's going to be no. the recipient. The recipient of that free kick kicks it wide. Cooper got a, a terrible bounce. And Jake Scott pumped it out over the boundary line. Adjacent the scoreboard that's beaming in this late afternoon spring sunshine. That is the X-ray group scoreboard. And on the Japo donks, donks time clock. Sorry, Simmer, I've just had a few issues with that today. We've gone almost eight minutes as Middleton taps it towards Hemming. Hemming's had a terrific game today. Mm. Tracks after footy. Oh, he's got the nod of approval from Brad Freak. That could count. <laughs> it just could count. Well done there. <laughs> Might have it's a bit toey, don't you, Pato? An Atura Aubrey netball update in the A-grade game. It is a nine-goal lead to Thaguna in that game. Geez, Kane Scott's been good for Beechworth today, I think. Yep. Young bloke up from the under-17s yep. uh, taking his opportunity. Good at cricket as well. He's a multi-sport athlete. Good-looking kick. The mark's been taken there by Stevens. Good grab. Really yeah. good grab in board. He's got some n um, uh, n numbers oh. inside four. Oh. He's going with a mongrel punt, and that <laughs> is the worst option. He should have had a shot. And he should have had a shot. He kicked the first goal of the game with an absolute ball tear, and he's... Next couple of attempts on the sticks haven't been great. There's a bloke in the back of his ute there. He turned around and he hit him fair in the shoulder. Lucky him in the noggin, Robbie. He kept his can though, no Gus. Did not drop an inch. Priority number one. Well done. Experienced operator. Oh, that's it. Meyer now has creeped up on the ball, so looks like Scotty Meyer will have one more crack at it. Left foot kick is out of bounds on the full. In front of the uh, Beechworth throng there. And I'm sure Van Claveren's getting plenty of advice. Finn Lappin marks the ball in his own 10-yard square almost. Has one bounce. Might have another. He does. He has two. Have another one. That's three. Have a fourth. He does. Shimmies around an opposition player and handballs to the coach. That's the way to win. <laughs> and Hibbo <laughs> let him down with a poor pass. Lappin, classy stuff. Oh, big Ooh. contest. Mason flew high. Got it off Hibberson. Good vision to go in ball. The execution wasn't great. Van Claveren got it onto a team. Hemming, Cooper. That was Dylan. Over the top goes the handball. Cooper's the recipient. 55 from home. Chisels oh. it in ball to Dolan. Jake Cooper, take a bow. He is an absolute superstar in the making. And he's hit up a superstar lace out on the chest. Big duels will go back and have a set shot. 40 metres out, directly in front. Yeah, just love that delivery as a forward, wouldn't you? Just Kyle Cooper, just beautiful there. He's been outstanding today. If he kicks this, it'll be his fourth. Big duels to the Gap Road end to ice the minor semi-final. The veteran likes it off the boot, and he yeah. snuck it through. Chilton are going to progress to the prelim final. They'll take on Yakandana next week, and this game is all over here at Sandy Creek.
Yeah, just really good, really good ball movement there by the Swans. Uh, Beechworth have really come out far in this last quarter to try and give themselves a bit of momentum. Had the first five inside fifties in the Mac Jack shed stat sheet, but Chilton only had the three and able to put one through the big stiff. They've been sticks. They've been peppering the goals, the Bush Rangers, but just haven't been able to kick a big one on the scoreboard for them. What a sizzling pass that was, Scooter. That was a real worm burner, wasn't it? Doolan only had to move oh. forward, and it was in his in his the bread basket, wasn't it? That service is that clever tap. Now whistle, Richie Vantage. Oh, Swindles did well there because he had to make. Well, they got one high there, a bit of a clip. Nah, he's bringing it back. No, oh, there it is. Yeah, there's high. the clip. Oh. Yeah, but I'm on Paddo's terms at the moment. I'm reading him superbly. Oh, Mitchie McLean, 40 got round, gave it back to Meyer. Meyer kicks it wide, and Richie was there jostling with Pritchard, and the boundary line wins out. It'll be thrown in between half forward and centre wing. On the club room side here at Sandy Creek. And it is 74 to 30. That is on the X-ray group scoreboard, Gus. It's going to be thrown in. If we go around the grounds for Aubrey, Wodonga, MG. Wodonga Bulldogs, 79 lead. The Wayne Grader Rovers, 45. How long's it going, that game, Freaky? Uh, there's about 12 minutes gone in the last quarter. So you'd still say there'd be another 15 They're to home. 20 minutes. If they get another quick yeah. one, then get it in, just inside don't five try to, oh, you've Don't got, try to build the theatre up, Gus. That one's done and dusted. Robert, you've got history. Even at this venue. To, oh, to, uh, one of my great... For my Charcoal King, Scott Fraser... Can you enlighten our listeners on what Robert This came up yesterday, game? didn't it? It came up yesterday, yeah. boys. Uh, yes. Ten minutes into the second quarter in 2015, Robbie called Kewa Sandy Creek the Premiers. And uh, mm. we all know in extra time, the uh, Talangata Hoppers won the Premiership. Inside 50 goes the boundary throw in. Chilton have numbers. Cooper dives on top of this one. We'll ball it up 30 from home. Three minutes to go in the A grade netball. Looks like Faguna will progress to take on Kewa Sandy Creek. They lead by 10 goals. Uh, in that contest over Chilton. You can book them in too, Gus. So you'd, you're just desperately looking for a close game here, mate. But I'm telling you, they're all done and dusted here. High kick. Scotty Meyer says, go out. Oh, it bounces over his head and it stays in. And now he's got to follow up. Oh. Stevens is under pressure. Oh, Umpire says, no, I'm happy. If that, just play on, boys. Here comes Mason. Benny Mason. A beautiful pass to Van Claveren. Ash kicks it deep. The mark will be taken by Doolan, I think it is. It is. Mark Doolan will go back and have a shot for goal number five, 25 metres out directly in front, Brad, and that would extend the lead to 50 points. Freaky, I have, don't think I've asked you all day, but what are the in, overall inside 50s for yeah. this game? Yeah, well in favour of the of Chilton Swans. They've had 40 inside 50s now to 31. They've just been mm. able to dominate after quarter time. It's been one-way traffic, really. 28 inside 50s in the second and third quarters to 16. As Doolan thread through goal number five for him on a personal note. And on a team note, it's 11. 11, 14, 80. Lee Beachware, 4, 6, 30. That's on the X-Ray Group scoreboard. Scooter Fraser, you just enjoy watching Mark Doolan play football, don't you? He just he's very good on the eye. You want a stat? Give me a stat, Scoot. Hey, Mark Doolan. Stat. Mark Doolan, five one thirty one leads Beechworth four six thirty today. I tell you what, he's not doing the Mac Jack stats, but that's a they're even good clapping one him. Yeah, they're even clapping Scooter's stat. I tell you. Oh. ground to as well. Scotty Meyer, he's been outstanding. And you can come off too, Cole Cooper. And yep. <laughs> yep. I reckon, to be honest, you could probably man a case to bring the majority of the team off here, Robert. <laughs> I, you know I, what? I'd just like Chilton to kick another 10 points so you blokes yeah. can actually just suffer in your jocks because I said 10 goals at <laughs> the start know, of the day. Hey, Gussie, you know it is interesting in this situation. We're talking about the players you take off and rest. How about the poor bugs that get left on? How do they feel? <laughs> McLean inside 50 for the Swans. Cooper tracks back. He wants to read the crumbs. The Bushies have numbers. They come out to the broadcast side wing. Mitch Anderson marks the Beechworth. Right foot kick, I tell you what. Could have been a bit of trouble there. Kick down the line. Lappin. He has been a star today, Freaky. I nearly reckon he's been the best player on the ground today, Finn Lappin. He's been simply outstanding. He's been everywhere. Great outdoors mark of the day from Lappin. Big yeah. Mac. And a nice little low one there by Brooks too. Good fist for Geordie Eaton, but it's gone the way of Swindles. On to Jake Cooper. Jake Cooper from long range. Goes long. Open goal square. Goal. Yeah. 
lovely finish from Jakey Cooper. He's second for the day, and they've both been contenders for the Union Hotel goal of the day, but nothing will beat his effort in the second quarter. A magnificent dribble kick. So a little bit of icing on the cake there. The margin goes out to 56 points. Fourth quarter action here for Talangata Construction and Maintenance. It's been outstanding today, Jake Cooper. He's, he probably didn't even have his brother in the side. He'd probably be speaking from a whole different <laughs> light. He's very similar to his brother, yeah. but he, he's been outstanding, been everywhere today. Sort of a one-two punch between the Cooper boys in that forward half. His old man Trevor would be as happy as Larry today. Meyer, he won the tap. Pumps it out of midair. Not a bad kick in the end. Falls in the middle of the centre wing position. Cartledge came through. He left it behind. Vandermeer had a crack. The Swans get it forward. Inside forward 50. Sitting underneath this pack here is Carey. Going to have to be clean. Gets the ball out wide to Melson. It goes long down the line. And Beechworth have numbers sitting underneath this one. It's Pritchard. Eaton pumps the ball to half forward. The mark has been missed there. Absolute freak with vision. And Jacobson plays on and bangs it through for a minor score. So it's four gold seven of 31. They lead a trail, 12, 14, 86. Quick kicking, Gussie, but your man, Kyle Cooper, is classy as ever. Yeah, the brothers link up. They've got synergy, these oh, two. Oh, oh, a bit of candy oh, from no. Jake. He's gone. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Sorry, Jakey. You're gone. Free kick's going to go. He's not happy. Beach worth the carry. Right, oh, is he? He hasn't much had much help today. It is his last game. Is it really? Yep. Yeah. I'll have a shot then if it's your last <laughs> game, Brado. Hit the top. Inside 50. Good looking kick. Stead one on one. Bit too much out the back for him. Hemmings coming through. Good tackle from the captain in Ben Mason. And we'll ball it up 30 metres out from Beachworth goal. We were touching on it before, boys. Looks like the Swans have put Scotty Meyer on the pine for the last 15 minutes or so of this quarter. And. Probably one more player as we touched on, Kyle Cooper, is probably the, the, the last of the trio that might come off soon. Here's Garside off half back. Oh, he's got a hand. What a secondary option, and that was McGee. McGee floats one up here nicely. Dylan Van Claveren, he's been good. He's got a runner. Caleb Bertram says, I'll go, and you give it to me. He does. He taps it, paddles it, got it. Handball went back to Van Claveren. He got knocked ass over red as he kicked it. Mark is taken. Here's a chance for Vandermeer. Too far out to score. Chips it short. Ah, beautiful pass. And it's found the hands of Benny Jones. He'll go back, take a bit of time out of the clock. 19 minutes gone. Boundary side for Charcoal Kings. I reckon it's Eaton who's down on the outer side of the ground there, Scoot. Geordie Eaton, and he, he looks to be in a bit of a way. Yeah, Geordie Eaton and Caleb Bertram uh, look like a clash of heads. They both were on the, on the ground face down for a few seconds, but they He's both right. got up and got the towel and... Jordan Eaton mightn't be coming off, though. Kick on the way. It should be rushed through by Beechworth. Kick off the ground. It was a Beechworth player who did it. And he's conceded an own goal. So it's 12-15-87. Chilton to Beechworth, 4-7-31. And Jordy Eaton is coming off. Scooter, you're boundary side. Pretty close to where he's coming off now, mate. What, what's your medical prognosis of that injury? No blood, but uh, maybe, yeah, just a bit of a head knock and uh, coming off for a bit of precautionary measure. We have had our doctors on the OM Live call team on the boundary before, so... Mm, yeah, good, Scooty. Scooter. He, he tends to um, slide on the, on the... Probably gives him the benefit of the doubt to go on other than ruling them out, I reckon, Scooter. Unlike Freaky, he said Dool's oh. was done in the first term. Just, just said he was all over Red Rover. Five. Dool had a transfusion at <laughs> half time. <didn't laughs> we had the I've really liked the game today of Peter Jeffries. Uh, Scoot for, for Beechworth. They haven't had too many helpers, but I think he's been pretty solid in defence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, well, I guess Jeffries, Kane, Scott, Cam Fendick as well. But um, they're few and far between Steady. for the good, the good contributors. I think you can see the Beechworth supporters streaming out of Sandy Creek. 
giving you the bird too. A few of them, Gus, for looks at that car window. And freaky. <laughs> and the lot of it. Cole Cooper over the back. Oh, good mark. Got to pay that. Gee, that was a good grab. Just at, probably at this level, not many take those. Cole Cooper, he's he doesn't well, listen. Boys. Get him off. <laughs> What's his stats there, Freak? He's, he's coming in for gold number three. He's, a, he's coming up for his 21st disposal. Now, boys, you, you got upset at Brad Hibbertson before for kicking a goal and then coming yes. off. In this situation, if he does put this through the big sticks, is he okay to come off? No, leave him on. Oh, yeah. No, leave him on. He's loving life. Yeah, the coach is bringing himself off. Yeah. off. Yep. No, young fella, he loves life. Cooper's had that many kicks, Robbie. Yep. He's got the blue boots. Yep. One is blue, the right one. He's it, light blue after out. today. Here he comes for goal number three. He loves He's it. He's got it. He don't worry about the umpire giving the all clear. Cooper gives it as soon as it left the boot. And he slammed it through for his third. They've got five between them, the brothers, today. Kyle's got three and Jakey Cooper's got 2-2. Two, two. And Chilton get their 13. 13, 15, 93. I lead Beachwear 4, 7, 31. And this sets up a titanic clash next Saturday afternoon, Bradley, with, with Yak and Dander. And Chilton here for the preliminary final. Yeah, absolutely. Chilton are just priming at the right time of the year. And Yak and Dan look like they might have a few injuries. It's going to be a super interesting clash next Saturday, uh, Saturday afternoon out here. Hopefully, I haven't looked ahead at the forecast. Hopefully, the weather's similar because if it is, it's going to be a red-off occasion. Good, I think, boys. Just going to have a look at that, Gus. I'm going to have a look at the weather. You uh, take over, mate. Oh, coming through the guts here is Hemming. He streams inside, attacking 50. Beautiful-looking kick out the back. The Swans have numbers. Beechworth defending with their lives on the line. Cooper, pinballs around. Umpire should blow the whistle here. Surrey oh. applies a big tackle. Gee. More ball Are you looking at what I'm looking at, Scoot? 12 degrees yeah. and sunny. Oh, yeah, I've got 15 and sunny. Oh. But no rain, that's the main no thing. No rain, Gussie. Oh, that'll, that'll lift a bit. 62 points the margin at the 22-minute mark. It's going to come into attack pretty quickly. McGee had a really good finals campaign for the he Swans. He has. He has. As big Kyle. I reckon he's going to go back and test himself here, McGee. He Bobby, is. they call him. Bobby McGee. Specky, yeah. isn't it? Specky. Oh, Specky, is it? Torp. <laughs> That's an interesting nickname. <laughs> no, he's kicking Torch. Torch. You think McGee. Torch off uh, the could have been. Torch McGee. Oh. Well, well learnt. What do we got, Gus? Here, 23 minutes have ticked over on the Japo Donks time clock. There we go. Most quarters have been going around 25, 26 minutes today. That helps you out. Snapshot, oh, high up and under there by young Matty Swindles. And it's going to be mar marked by Cooper, but it's over the boundary line on the second bite. He almost jumped the fence there. Picked up a lady's chair and put it in the boot for her. That's how good he is. And Beachworth have got it. Last line of defence. They drive it long. Down the line. Masl Maslam's kick was good. Oh, good mark by your boy, Bobby McGee. Took an absolutely beauty. That was a, a contender for the great outdoors mark of the day, Gus, I reckon. As he thumps it inside. Forward 50. No one home except the fist of the Beachworth defenders. Stead just keeps on going. Kicks along the ground. Terrific effort from him. Well, as he got hold of I'll take it. We'll cross boundary side for Charcoal Kings. Scooter phrase the Chilton boys are going to love this one. <laughs> yeah, I think they just need to get through this last five to seven minutes of, uh, yeah, no, nothing too, uh, too bruising. Fendick, narrow entry inside for... to the top of the goal square. Stones out the back. He got knocked off the footy. Should have been a free kick. Chilton are happy to see this one across the behind line of this. So it's a minor score going the way of the Bush Rangers. 4-8-32. Chilton 13-15-93. Tulanga, the construction and maintenance final quarter has been dominated by the Swans. They're going to take on Yak and Dana in the prelim next week. I don't think that contest helped uh, Connor Stone's dicky shoulder there either, boys. He's done well to get through today. Stone, he's done real well. Left foot, low piercing kick. Falls towards Stevens. He's tackled. He's shoveled out in some sort of fashion. 
And it's our man, Mitchy Hemmings, who ran it over the line. What have we got there, Bradley? Full time, I believe, in the Ovens of Murray. Yeah, if we go around the grounds for Aubrey Wodonga, MG, the Wodonga Bulldogs are through to play the Wayne Garata Magpies next Sunday at Button Park, 87 to 46. Wow. They have defeated the Wayne Garata Rovers. Well done to Jordan Taylor and Carl at Wodonga. Dan Vaccaro might be, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be in the box with him. No. We, I guess we thought Panda might have been bad with North this year, but this is worse. <laughs> Taking it out of the ruck was Anderson, high up and under. It's online, it's bouncing, and it's kept alive by <laughs> Beechworth. It's a comedy of errors. Get the Benny Hill music going for that sort of stuff. Tied up in the pocket. This is it's, ugly. A, it's a real ugly contest. Stead, he got taken high. Umpire put the whistle away. You don't have to be dead to be stiff. Lappin might have given away oh, a free kick geez. he has. It's a free kick in the pocket. It's going to go the way of the Bush Rangers. I cannot see who it is. Belchie. Yeah. Dylan Pritchard is impeding my view. Lappin punched it as he crashed into yeah. Belchie and it was given front on contact. So. Siren sounds. Would you have the kick for goal here, boys? You have to. For statistic, yeah. statistical purposes, I would. Kick it over your head. Belchie might be getting paid per he should, goal. He should so. play on. Wouldn't that be funny? Alessandro Belchie, it'll count for little in this contest. He went to do the snap too. He yep. got told, oh. Belchie. Kicks a goal, but it's too little, too late. Because Chilton have progressed to take on Yak and Dand up in the preliminary final. 55-point victors are the Chilton Swans. They were absolutely prolific this afternoon, gents. They were fantastic, Scoot, weren't they? And, uh, you know, that building confidence, that's two finals wins in a row. And the game against Yak next week is going to be a beauty. And the margin on the final siren was 10 goals, wasn't it? Is that right? So close. In fact, that goal robbed you of one. No, that of one. was after the siren. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well played. It's good. Uh, yes. Very good win by Chilton. Um, so our finals now, uh, we've had 67 points, 52, 50. And today now, uh, some big margins. Uh, I think the next two weeks might be uh, a little bit different with Yak and Chilton next week. And then whoever wins that game going on to play Kiwa Sandy Creek in the grand final. Hopefully we've got a couple of close ones and you, you boys are on your toes the whole day. Scooter, yep. I don't envy you having to pick our Wodonga Tire Power Player of the Day. A couple of big contenders to choose from, but i tell you what, I reckon Finn Lappin's mounted a pretty good case, as has Kyle Cooper. Hemo. Hemo was good. Mark Doolan was good with five, the veteran. Yeah. What were the stats uh, on the on the Mac Jack shared stat sheet telling us, Freaky? Yeah, in that game, it was Kyle Cooper had the 21 disposals. He was the leading disposal getter for the Chilton Swans on our stat sheet. Cam, uh, Cam Fendick, obviously the Barton medalist, was outstanding for the Bush Rangers. He had 28 disposals, 17 for Tristan Stead and 13 for Alessandro Belchi. Uh, with the Chilton side of things, as we said, Kyle Cooper had 21. Brad Hibbertson, the coach, had 20 disposals, uh, 16 for Ashton Brooks and 14 for Ben Mason. So there's a few contenders there, but I also think there's a few boys off our stat sheet. Obviously, Mark Doolan kicking the five goals. I thought Finn Lappin was outstanding off the halfback line. I nearly, I nearly think he probably put himself right up there as the, the player of the day, that's for sure. We'll just keep an eye. Two boys, um, obviously, with Braden Kerry, I believe it's his last game, and he's heading over towards the change rooms now. And, yeah, we'll probably see it. Be a bit of an emotional moment for him too. He's been a f fantastic career. Great legend. player. Yeah, legend of Beechworth. He's just been a great contributor and he, he's probably squeezed another couple of years out of his body. Uh, you know, with Beechworth playing finals, he's, he's, seen him at, he's seen him at the top and he's seen him at the bottom. And he's always been there pretty much throughout the whole thing, Braden Carey. As we see the Chilton boys coming off, nice little round of applause. of the day and I reckon the children boys will get stuck right into Finn here. Yeah they're right behind him boys. 21 year old Finn Lappin, great game today, our tyre power player of the day. Picked in the team of the year as well this week at the Barton medal and uh, what a great effort off the half back line today. Yeah well it's always easier when there's a bit of pressure on the ball coming in but just tried to do as best as I could. And the boys that came in today uh, took their place obviously Caleb's, Caleb's copped, a, copped a big knock, um, everyone played their role. Uh, yeah, old Scotty Selwood over there. Um, look, <laughs> everyone played their role well today and I suppose the scoreboard shows it. And up forward, you'll, everyone looks up to Dools and uh, another, another five for him today. 
Yeah, I think Box would be pretty unhappy about that, but oh well, he might get picked a bit more next week. <laughs> Great effort, get in there and recover, and all the best for next week against Yak. Cheers, mate. Finn Lappin, our Wodonga Tire Power Player of the day. The boys get around him, they're very happy with that one. <laughs> oh, they are a, indeed. If there's a fine system, I reckon Finn's got a pretty big one coming his way. Scoot will follow the boys in. <laughs> <laughs> and just while that was going on, yeah, we did see Brad, Brad and Kerry coming off the ground there, all the Beechworth supporters lining the entry into the change rooms and gave him a really good round of applause and uh, rubber stamp a great career, Gussie, and well didn't, didn't finish the way he probably wanted to, but that's, that's the way footy goes sometimes, they, sometimes it pans out in a nice finish, but yeah, and he played well again today too, he, like, he always gives his all, he's just, uh, yeah, been... Get in there, Scoot. I think Scoot's got the mic off. He might have. So, whether the odds be great or be small, just a win and win over all. While our loyal sons are marching, always the victory. Chilton victorious by 55 points. They'll venture into the preliminary <laughs> final next week. I think he found the mic. Oh, I think he found the mic. <laughs> He found the mic in the end. Chilton running away, victors, 13-15-93 oh. to Beechworth, 5-8-38. We'll try and get Hibbo out for a chat with Scooter very, very shortly, but uh, we got there in the end, gents. Oh, do you reckon he'll pay for me, me appointment of the year, Doctor, this week? Jeez, I just reckon i got a perforated eardrum. I'm going to trip to the dentist tomorrow morning, Freak. I reckon I might have numbered up the ear, ear the specials. Well, bang! Uh, very good. So, I, I'll tell you what, gents. I, I know we've called... Be um, uh, us three have called Chilton on consecutive weekends now. I think the talk will quickly become this week that Chilton's red-hot form could take it right up to Yak and Dander. The only oh, team yeah. to beat Kiwa this year mm. and a, a brand of footy like this, I genuinely think we could see a side come from the elimination. Through the year, the red hot form, a couple of winning form is great form, and losing form is not great form. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, Yakanana had a sen sensational win against Beechworth, but yesterday, obviously, we're knocked off a bit by the the, the Hawks in uh, Kiwa. But it's going to be set up a massive clash next Saturday afternoon, and Yak a bit knocked around as well. It's, yep. There's not many injuries in this Chilton side, and there's not many flaws across that side when you're looking at it across the game. Well, I think if, if you look at the other side, I think uh, Bodie Hibberson and Nick mm. Stevens were late withdrawals today from that side. And I, I believe that, um, and that's one I'll get a uh, scooter, will ask Brad Hibberson when we have a chat to him about the potential availability of both Bodie Hibberson and Nick Stevens. But that's going to give them a really strong squad to pick from. We know their seconds have already qualified for the grand final. They <coughs> won in extra time yesterday. So it, it's all about momentum. You get the seconds have rolled into a, into a grand final. The, the seniors who are defending premiers have won two in a row. And I, I, I would have to say after what I watched yesterday and what I saw today, I have no doubt that Chilton will go into next week as a favourite. And it's a really big test for Yak and Dander, isn't it? They've been one of the massive form test. teams yep. all year and they've got a massive opportunity to prove it. They got their colours lowered yesterday to, yeah. uh, to the Kiwa Sandy Creek Hawks, but we know the Hawks have been the best team all year, arguably the most consistent team across the last two or three years. They've got a massive challenge here, yeah. and I think the winner of next week's game will take it right up to Kiwa Sandy Creek, but I think it's going to be a genuine toss of the coin coming in next week. Mm. It's probably the most anticipated final of this 2023 yeah. series. I mean, what I saw today, Freaky, compared to what I saw yesterday, I reckon... I'm just for my observations, Chilton just had a little bit more class around the whole ground today. Uh, and, and I'm, but having said that, I'm prepared to give Yak that one bad game, a bit of a mulligan, because mm. it, they, they had so many down quiet. I, and that, as Gus said before, it, it, te it tests a character. They certainly can come back. And um, yeah, but it, it sets up a great clash. It, when you got momentum, you can be it hard to stop. And they're they a defending premier, Chilton. Consecutive straight set exits in the finals for the Beechworth Football Club. And I think what's quite evident for mine is they're a very good home and away side. They lack that pace when they get out here to Sandy Creek. Definitely, so mate. It's certainly something they've been exposed in today. He joined us this time seven days ago following a massive win 
over the Barwell, the football club. Another massive win today over the Beechworth Football Club. Co-coach of the Chilterns, or the senior coach say, of the Chilterns Sons, is boundary side with Scooter Fraser. You got a hibbo? We got you, Scooter. Got you, Come in there, rightio. Yeah, we've grabbed Hibbo before he can uh, can open a can. Hibbo, congratulations. What a great win. I, I guess in the end, there was a couple of us that had picked a, picked a bit of a comfortable win, but uh, I guess to start off with, Finn Lappin and Doolan. What do, what do you say about those two guys? Uh, well, they're at uh, probably different stages of their career. Um, but, yeah, we're lucky to have Dools. He, he's a professional. He gets up every week. And, like, he's a, he's a hard matchup. Um, we, we probably don't look after him too well sometimes coming forward. But, you know, he's going to give it his all. He, he's been a star of the competitions around here for a long time. So he, he's always going to give it his all. And then Finn Lappin in the back line, mate, I thought he was, he was super today. And I've praised him all year. Um, Nice and clean, he just does what he has to to get the job done. He's all team, so that's all I can ask from him. Yeah, the way he goes about it, it certainly uh, give all the coaches gave him that, uh, I guess, that kudos in the team of the year position for him. Uh, the Cooper boys as well, um, yeah, they were just everywhere today. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a lively bunch them too. I actually, I have to, they work for me um, during the week, so come game day, I don't know if they listen to me too much, but yeah. <laughs> They run around and they provide plenty of options and, and they're quick and skillful. So, yeah, I'll let them, let them do whatever they want if they don't want to listen to me on a um, weekend. But during the week, they've got to listen. So. Speaking of during the week, uh, you've got a pretty big headache, mate. Uh, your brother Bodie twins the Hemi last Tuesday. Told me today that he's had a bit of a run, so he reckons he'll be right. Nick Stevens as well. What's, what's the deal with him? Uh, yeah, last week he... Um, he finished the game on the bench. Uh, just again, he just, he just felt his hammy. Um, but it is what it is, and we just work through. If they come up, they come up. If they don't, they don't. And, and um, we've got plenty of depth in, in our twos, in the seniors, uh, in, in the um, granny already. Um, so we just work through it, and we just replace them if they don't come up. And, or, and the guys that replaced them today went well as well. So, yeah, we've got plenty of depth to, to look at options. So. Yeah, well, speaking of which, uh, obviously Richie and, and Bertram certainly played their role today. Um, Bertram, they called it, Finn Lappin called him the, the Scotty Selwood of Chilton, but uh, certainly put their bodies on the line and uh, give themselves a go for a selection again next week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I praise the um, young blokes in the rooms after the, after the day because that, that happened early and sometimes young blokes can take a hit and go into their shell, but Bertie was super today. He just gets a hand in. He, he's athletic and... And uh, he, he's the same as Finn, sort of young bloke, and just runs it out well. So that's more. That's all I can ask from the young fellas. They just put their body on the line and, and go from there. So, you guys up there got any questions for Hibbo? Yeah, we'll fire a couple at Hibbo. Thanks to A Grade Oils and Batteries. Uh, Hibbo, what do you do on the track this week, mate? Obviously, you've come in off consecutive Sunday games. They've both been hot contests, and now you've got a six-day break on your hands, taking on a really fast Yak and Dana side that will be hungry to bounce back. Do you modify your training program during the week to suit, or do you go hammer and tong on the track? Uh, yeah, I spoke about it after the game, six-day turnaround, and just ask the boys to commit and, and not have too many beers. Yeah, enjoy the win today. But, um, yeah, we'll be going from here straight to the river, uh, looking after it. Boys are icing up. And we just got to take it as it is. We, we got ourselves in this predicament, not winning the games early. So, yeah, we'll just probably, it won't be as heavy on the track. It'll be a lot of skill work this week. And just uh, modify it to just get through, get everyone up and about the best we can. And we just got to deal with it. It's, a, it's how we've been... Um, that's how, what we've been uh, given, so we just work through it and go from there. Got you, Ebo. Oh, mate, congratulations on the win. Also, your own game too, mate. I thought you were a great contributor all day. Ripping goal down there, and uh, don't like the way you took yourself off, mate. You kick a goal, you got to stay on. Come on, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, I thought just after looking at the game last week, there's a couple of other players stepped up today. Oh, Mitchie McLean, Mitch Hemming, and guys like Connor Garside. I was going to... Just, just showed the depth that you actually have got in that side. That they were really good contributors, I thought today. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Mitchy, uh, Mitch McLean, he's been there about all years. He's a new one. No one really knows about. I think he actually won a, a BNF at Wodonga Thirds. Um, but then, yeah, early days he was he away. He had a couple of weeks away, and then he was a bit injured. Um, but he's looked after himself. He's got in. We knew he was always classy enough to be in in our side and run through the midfield. So he's been super. And then Connor Garside's like 
he's one of the oh he's a pickup of the year for me yeah. in our side he, he is um, solid as a rock down there and just gives it his all doesn't have to do anything fancy and just does his job and I can't ask for anything more where'd you grab him from where did he, where did he come in from uh, he's actually moved down from Brisbane um, his brother played in the force flag last year or brother or step stepbrother or half brother um, so and then his his name got chucked to me I think I mentioned it last week because he played well last That's week right. that he he, he actually was talking to Mitter, and luckily, before he'd signed with them, they, the club come to me and said, oh, what about this bloke? And I said, well, why didn't someone tell me? Word of mouth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then just had a chat to him, and he was, he was happy because he always wanted to go to children because of his brother. But And then as soon as I rang him, he was straight on board. So, Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a lucky pick up, that one. Uh, Brad, congratulations on the win, mate, and all the best for, for next week. Cole McGee, I thought, as the game wore on, really grew legs. and It must be such a luxury for when you want to give Scotty Meyer a bit of a rest up forward or come off if the, if the game allows it to be able to throw someone in the ruck of his quality in the game for you. Yeah, yeah, I remember before we uh, the year before we got Scotty, Cole uh, rucked a fair bit, and I thought he was one of the top ruckmen in the league then. And then you add Scotty and you got them two. Running around, it's it's a luck. It is a luxury, especially Cole um, deep uh, in forward line. He he really provides a target. He's a he's a really nice kick for a big bloke. So oh, nothing against Scotty. He's, <laughs> he's a nice kick too. But yeah, Kyle, we can rely on him. He gives a contest, and yeah, he he is ripper. Now, Hibbo, right about where you are right now, you took a really nice mark, and you spoke about Scotty Meyer, how he went forward. You hit him. What looked yeah. a bit like sound, but looked like the big fella was stuck on the treadmill, and you put the arms up in disgust. Oh, well, what do you reckon? He wasn't moving real. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon you saw the red and white yeah. jumper, and then you thought that's perfect where I want to put that, and then the big fella laboured a bit, didn't he? Yeah, well, we we uh, spoke about our <laughs> forward entries during the week and, and putting it out in front and letting our forwards do the work. And I see Jai middle and standing behind him, so I wasn't kicking up on his head. So I was just like, come on, Scotty, and put it out there. And, jeez, you wasn't moving quick. <laughs> right, you talk about the big bloke. Um, next week's a big game. Um, Leachy and Scotty Meyer have had some great battles. You've had a draw and a 10-point win to Yak. Do you, do you look at that match-up next week or just let those two blokes go? Is there anyone from Yak that you're going to look at during the week? We well, you know, not don't give too much away, obviously. <laughs> not going to give it to 2 AY, let alone me, but... Um, yeah, you know, is there any matchups next week you, you're likely to look at? Ah, oh, look, they're a classy team. I, I I won't give too much away. I actually didn't watch the game yesterday. I don't like watching it before um, I watching footy before I play. So it's good that I get to watch it throughout the week. Tomorrow night, the missus doesn't like it too much. I'll sit there watching footy all the time. But <laughs> I'll have a good look at it. Obviously, they've got a, a really good midfield plus uh, Leachy in the ruck. Um, it's going to be a good battle. Um, and we do stack up pretty good against each other. You know, we're both quick and probably small than a few other sides. But, yeah, it, it has been good battles throughout the year with them. So I hope just for another one and, and hopefully we get up at the end of the day. So yeah. Hib Hibbo, last one from me, mate. I actually thought, um, even though it was probably the closest quarter, I thought your first quarter was really good because Beechworth came out and you could tell in their warm-up they had a bit of a look about them. They were going to throw ring at you. And a few guys had going with a lead at quarter time. Uh, I just thought you, uh, you you handled the early 10, 15 minutes of heat and then started to take control. You, you'd have been pretty... Because that, that's a real typical first quarter finals football, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we spoke about that. And we, we know Beechworth love the contested footy. So we spoke about that heavily, that that's where we've got to try to beat them and we should open them up on the outside. Yeah. And, yeah, it was hot. It's always going to be hot. Definitely first quarters of finals are, are real hot and it's whoever weathers that and, and um, builds from there. But I think, yeah... I always knew if we weathered that storm early, won the contested footy and got them on the outside that I'd hope that we'd be classy enough and quick enough to get them going, get it, get us over the line. So, yeah, we, we focused on that and then, yeah, I think we, we played really well for that hot hot start. Rest yep. up, Hibbo. A big game against Yakinana next Saturday. We can't wait to watch it. Thanks for joining us, mate, and all the best next week. All right, thanks, boys. The coach of the Children's Swans, Brad Hibberson, joining Scooter Fraser Boundary side. Thanks to A-grade oars and batteries. Of course, the team at A-grade oils and batteries, proud supporters of all sports at the grassroots level, locally owned and operated in Wodonga. Uh, so they were really good today, Chilton. Yeah, Very did, hard to beat. What do you boys take from Obviously, Bodie Hibberson's got a hammy. Did he mean Stevens had a hammy as well? Yeah, I, by the sounds of that, I don't... Yeah. It, from the way he's, What do you do there? Well, I think the only positive to, to Nick Stevens is one is he said he came off tight, and that's going to be, uh, Robbie, a 13-day break. So if he... 
has only got tightness, you think he's a chance. But I think with Yak and Dander's really strong forward line and the fact they've got a couple of prongs in their attack, they're going to need a Nick Stevens back in the lineup. Yeah, I, I, I reckon they might even they might even back themselves in to give both boys the opportunity because you can remember their seconds won't be playing next week. Correct. There is mm. depth there, and I, I'll, I'll be honest, Gus. What I saw yesterday, I, I, Yak's forward line probably lacked firepower. Okay. If anything, without a lot, they really didn't miss a Lockie McMillan. Um, I think what they what they what they had there today, I, I think that they'd be quite happy with that. If those other two come up at a bonus, what it does mean you're taking a punt, aren't you, to maybe miss them both playing it in a grand potentially in a grand final. I reckon they've got enough confidence what they did today to err on the side of caution with those two players. Yeah, I, I think that they potentially could in going into next week. It's going to be really really interesting mm. what they look at this week on the training track, Gussie. Yep, absolutely. Full time here at the MCG, the Bush. Chilton, too strong. 13, 15, 93. Defending the Bush Rangers, 5, 8, 38. Our post game show, thanks to A grade, oils and batteries, is done and dusted. The Bush as Yak and Dan to take on Chilton for a spot in the grand final. This has been the TDFL Finals, where you won't miss a thing. We'll help you get the job done. We'll make your job a smooth one. Done, Swin City Cranes. For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes, safety is our second name. You're looking pretty with Dunst Twin City, no job's out of reach. Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it, no fuss, talk to us. We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Dunst Twin City, cranes. CADMAC want your machinery to keep working as hard as you do. So, as you're gearing up for the busy season, now is the time to stock up on your machinery oil and net wrap. For a limited time, get a free cap when you buy 20 litres of any New Holland oil. Or get a free jacket with every pallet of New Holland net wrap or bale twine. These offers are only available at CADMAC and while stocks last. CADMAC, helping you grow for life. T's and C's apply. Finer Embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the Finer Embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL. Computer that won't crash? Need your Wi Fi turbocharged? Need better data backup? Whatever you need your computer to do, Wangaratta Computers will help you do it better. Because that's what we do best. WangarataComputers.com.au. Light it, space it, and erase it. Finer embroidery is in the fabric of our community. Any logo on anything so your business can proudly present themselves well. Embroidery that adds that personal touch that doesn't break the bank. Join the finer embroidery community today. Proudly supporting the TDFL.
We'll help you get the job done We'll make your job a smooth one Dunn's Twin City Cranes For your semis, riggers, spotters, cranes Safety is our second name You're looking pretty with Dunn's Twin City No job's out of reach Rig it, lift it, move it, shift it No fuss, talk to us We'll help you get the job done, we'll make your job a smooth one. Guns Twin City Cranes! <laughs>